Please remain standing as senior pastor of City Park Church of Richmond, Virginia, Pastor Joe Ellison Jr. offers today's invocation. Let us pray to ask our family. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for allowing us to come and enjoy this sport. We love so much NASCAR. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for protecting our drivers yesterday, and thank you that you protect them today from hurt, harm, and danger. Father, we thank you for our men and women who serve around the world in our military. We thank you for their service. We thank you for NASCAR and Richmond International Raceway for the event. So we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Here to honor America, please welcome from Midlothian, Virginia, 14-year-old Sophia Nader as she performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the Those last moments before they jump in the car and head out on the track. The Toyota Owners 400 live on Fox straight ahead from Richmond.
I'm here with Dylan Hart after he just won a Die Hard 500. What's the question, dude? <laughs> one by one, I know we've seen some things. And I've asked myself, what could be more than this? And if you left me tomorrow, it is all. be a race car driver someday. It's a great sport. I love it to death, you know. It's, you know, it's all I've ever known, racing. That's the young Dale Earnhardt Jr. and here's the 42-year-old in his nationwide Hendrick Chevrolet starting 12th today. And it's the first race since announcing on Tuesday that this would be his final year as a driver in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Our poll sitter looking for his first victory this year. In fact, had a lot of lap. Matt Kenseth. In fact, there's a 22-year difference on the front row. Ryan Blaney in his forward alongside. Yeah, and the youth movement is alive and well in NASCAR. 24-year-old Kyle Larson won yesterday. The average starting age of the top 10 yesterday was 24. And there's Larson. He, has, he was good yesterday, but he's not too, too confident in this car today. And he's the points leader and has been. He expanded uh, that points lead. And people were talking about his comment. Uh, said that I feel like I'm the last true racer. He was referencing the fact that, you know, hey, I'll race anytime, anywhere. That's the, the, the young generation. And he's encouraging the other drivers to do the same. Get out to your local tracks, run some dirt, have some fun. We'll see some exciting action today. It's the Action Track, Richmond International Raceway, and we are live on Fox. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command for today's Toyota Owners 400, welcome loyal Toyota owner from Priority Toyota of Richmond, Major Eric Phillips. Drivers, start your engines! Over the course of these 17 years, we've seen Dale Earnhardt Jr. on Fox in times of triumph, tragedy, but never as a driver closing in on the close of his career. So we'll see that beginning today as we head upstairs to the men who will take you through the race, Daryl, Jeff, and Mike. Gentlemen. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our perch high above Richmond International Raceway. Now, the three of us have been working the Dale Earnhardt Jr. story all week and reporting it all weekend here. And, Daryl, the thing that I heard that really struck me was that he gets to make this decision on his own terms and in his own time. And, and Mike, I really like that, and I, I'm, I'm proud of Dale Jr. for the press conference. Uh, the way he handled that was so eloquent, and he did a great job with that. He wears his feelings on his sleeve. One thing he always worried about, he is a caring guy. He cares about this sport. He cares about the fans. That's why he's 14-time most popular driver. Yeah, so watch him go out and win a couple yeah. uh, before this season's half over. Last year, Joe Gibbs Racing had won five of nine races coming into Richmond. And if you put aside the fastest laps in practice and maybe the qualifying order, I don't know, Jeff, it just seems like the deck is stacked for Joe Gibbs Racing to break through today. Well, I know every weekend we talk, this is going to be their weekend. This is going to be their weekend. We know it is going to happen eventually. They have struggled on some of the bigger tracks, a mile and a half, which has been a bit of a surprise. But the area that I don't think they've struggled is on the shorter tracks. If you look at Martinsville, even Bristol a little bit last week, Week. And then you say, you look at that front row, Matt Kenseth's on the pole, go a little bit, a few rows further back, Kyle Busch is one of his best tracks. Denny Hamlin didn't qualify great, but this is also one of his best tracks. Right. I think Joe Gibbs Racing could very easily get that first win of the season right here today. So if I took them, would you want the field? <laughs> 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 we got 400 laps to talk question. about that. <laughs> In 1953, the Atlantic Exposition Grounds held its first race on a half-mile dirt track, and since then, well, the new slogan at Richmond says it all, chaos at every corner.
Chain I am bone rise up ting ting like glitter and gold. I got fire in my soul rise up ting ting like glitter. Welcome to Fox's coverage of the Toyota Owners 400 from Richmond International Raceway. 400 laps around this D-shaped three-quarter mile. Boy, this is going to be fun. There's the Toyota Camry XSE pace car that leads the field. On race day, you're used to seeing the Where's Kenny segment. Where is Kenny? Kenny Wallace! <laughs> what are you doing? Herman! <laughs> I tell you what, I got Buster telling me what to do here. He's telling me to slow it down a little bit. Pick her up, we're gonna go to 40 mile an hour. Focus, Kenny, you're, focus. You're, you're having to work hard, Kenny. Hey, tell you what, Jeff, I know you did it at Daytona, that's pretty impressive. Oh man, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, you, you got a lot to take in. You got the field stacked up behind you, pal. <laughs> I, I'm 40 mile an hour. Hey, listen, I wanna stay out here. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you. Buster will tell you that you could do that. Yeah, well, you know what they said, Herman, make sure you pull off the racetrack. I said, what if I run a lap? <laughs> run uh, and run, run fast, and have a good what? one. And then what? If he did it, it'd be the first lap and your last lap. But have fun out there, Kenny. <laughs> Here's the starting lineup for today's race. Matt Kenseth on the pole. Ryan Blaney with his third front row start of the year. Martin Truex, top 10 in both Richmond races last year. Ricky Stenhouse has a 10th place finish here. Have a look at the rest of the starting lineup and let's, let's talk, get on the let's horn. Let's talk to Mr. Stenhouse. All right. Hey, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., DW here, pal. You got me? I got you, DW. Go ahead. Buddy, you guys have continued to make progress with your car and your team. You're starting in fourth spot today. What do you think about this race? Got a shot at it? Well, I love the uh, old school red and white walls. That's the first thing I noticed when I got to Richmond this weekend. But our fifth third bank forward has been uh, pretty solid all weekend. Been real happy with it. Got a good start spot. Um, you know, this thing's going to slide around a lot. Track's going to change. Just going to have to be searching for grip all race. But uh, I think if we uh, make no mistakes, um, I think we'll have a good shot. Yeah, buddy, that high line looked like it was working pretty good for you. So good luck, man, and we'll be watching. Thank you, DW. Boy, he'll find the high line and in a hurry. Let's get downstairs to Pit Road. Matt Yoakum. Mike Martin, Trish Jr.'s racing resume is impressive. Well balanced also with wins on almost every type of racetrack except short tracks. Now, if they pull off a trophy today, it would fall right in line with Gucci and Cole Pern's agenda of focusing more on race wins than stage wins. Looking for that big impact, Vince. Former Richmond winner Joey Logano qualified fifth for this race, but he'll start 37th because the team had to change the transmission after final practice. Joey told me the goal at the start is managed aggression to not burn off those tires. He said, I'm going to try to drive 80%, but man, that's hard because I want to go. Chris Neville? Well, Casey Kane got his first Cup Series win here back in 2005, and last year this was his strongest track. This is the perfect place for him to turn around his season. And talking to crew chief Keith Rodden, he said, we've got a package for a race today. Race car is in. Here we go for 400 laps around the three-quarter miles of Richmond. She's hot and she's slick. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing drivers. Slick is the word. It's near 90 degrees. That'll be the high for today. Full sunshine, a few small clouds. It's gonna be slip sliding around this place. Track temp already up. Yeah, higher look at than that, it's been Mike. 123 degrees. These cars are not gonna have a lot of grip, especially if you're further back. I mean, those up front, like Matt Kenseth, yeah, they got nice clean air. Look at sparks already flying off some of the cars. Uh, yeah, there's so little. Uh, tire grip here under braking, cornering, and accelerating. It's really going to test these drivers' abilities. Yep, I have some good news for you guys. This is the best it's going to be, so you better <laughs> enjoy it because it ain't going to last well, long. And I, I got to say this in that first opening shot, I could have swore I saw that maybe the 77 of Eric Jones got a little bit of the wall coming off of turn two. Let's show it to you. Yeah, he, he's back here. 
right. That wasn't there. bad. He, just, he, just a kiss. Yeah, just a kiss. He can Good handle kiss. that, but boy, that was already close in the opening corner. You know, already we've seen Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, Jimmy Johnson, now Dale Earnhardt Jr. working that high groove, passing cars. Stenhouse started to race on tires that he scrubbed the wall with when he was qualifying. You notice on the right side of his car, no Goodyear on his tires where it had already been up against the wall before the race ever started. Well, and what you're going to watch here is who's fast in the early part of the run. Who wants to push and use up a little bit more of those Goodyear tires, and who's going to use up too much of them and fade on the long runs? We typically see some pretty decent green, long green flag runs. 77 the wall, in the wall, 77, Eric Jones. I mean, I mean, that car went straight. Car never turned. Come no, to the it corner, never did. It. did. Come down the back. Had we a flat. He was running 20th. We saw him brush the wall on lap one, but we're told he cut a left front tire. Well, did he? He probably made contact with somebody else uh, on the left side and cut that left front tire. Yeah, maybe when he got into the wall, he bounced off of that yeah. wall and got into somebody. And I guess he cut down left front tire. Sounds like. Oh, he, he comes yeah, he right are, at you yeah, right he here. already realizes there's something wrong. You can see the high line he's taking in there. Well, that tried tire's to, down. Try to get it slowed down, a little wiggle. Straight in the wall. Heavy contact. Saw the front of the car rear up in the air. That means he hit the wall a ton. Oof. And the car is pretty much destroyed. Now he is right across from the entrance to the garage area, which is where that car is likely headed. Larry McReynolds. Yeah, Mike, you want fresh tires any chance you get. And even though we've only run five or six laps, I think maybe the back half of the field will come. Remember, these were not sticker tires. These were the tires that had several cycles that they qualified on Friday. So we may see the back half possibly come. And you know, Larry, that could work into Austin Dillon's favor because he's started Hart to race. Jr. on pit road. A couple more. Just, just like you said, Larry, they're following them down pit road. Here yeah, Dylan Larson. started on new tires. Larson, Keselowski, Patrick coming to pit road along with Busher, Al Marola, Ty Dillon, Menard, Landon Castle, Joey Logano, Austin Dillon, and Cole Witt are all on pit road. Let's go back to lap one from our Goodyear blimp coverage and see if we see any, any contact uh, looking down at the lower right corner. That oh, he and Casey Kane made contact. Yeah. A little bit to the left front from the right rear, Casey Kane. I don't know if if Eric tried to go three wide or if Casey Kane went into the middle to make it three wide, but somehow they got three wide and it there just wasn't enough room off of turn two. Chris Neville. Boy, Mike, they were really hoping to try and turn this around this weekend. Eric Jones so strong in the short tracks. He ran up front last week but had contact with Greg Golding late in the race. And today, obviously, we just saw that contact with Casey Kane. Well, under, so under NASCAR's new damaged vehicle policy, if they haul that car to the garage area, they're out of the race. Yeah, I believe he's out of the race. They could if he could get it to pit road, try to make repairs, but that is heavy damage. There you can there see you the marks go. on Kane's car from the contact that ended up in a flat right front, a left front for Eric Jones. Yep. Yeah, very similar situation, but with the right front tire for Eric Jones last week at Bristol with a lap car that he was passing, but it doesn't take much. It's amazing how little contact and moving that fender in on that tire can cause it to go flat that quick. Particularly early in the race, pressures are really low already. Take a look at how Kyle Busch is driving with confidence this weekend, brought to you by Carfax. He comes in here with more wins on the three-quarter mile at Richmond than any other driver in the field and looked very, very good in practice. And Mike, back to Eric Jones just a second. I mean, Goodyear recommends 12 pounds of minimum air pressure in your left side tires. They probably dropped it down a little bit more than that. A little bit of contact, and it'll cut that sidewall right down. As we get ready to go back to green, Jeff, how about the AARP keys to the drive today? Yeah, it's an unusually hot day today here in Richmond with temps in the 90s. That's 20 degrees above average for this time of the year, so drivers will be pushed to the limit physically. With those high temps comes a lack of grip, cars sliding all over this racetrack, and the driver that saves the tires and minimizes that sliding uh, with the car will have an advantage. And with those challenges of heat, and lack of grip, it will be easy to make mistakes, especially late in this race, so force others to make them, not you. We were going to go back to green, but there's debris near the entrance to pit road. They'll have to get that, so we're going to add one lap. Matt Kenseth has led all 10 laps so far. He and Ryan Blaney will line back up on the outside. So here's today's Ford Performance track facts for Richmond International Raceway. 
Both Team Penske drivers won at Richmond in 2014. The Wood Brothers, with Blaney up restarting on the front row, scored their first win here in 1960. Speedy Thompson was the winner for the Wood Brothers in, of course, a four. Mike's a nice restart here. You run 10 laps, kind of got tire pressure built up. We may not see the same results that we saw in that first start. Well, I knew we were going to see some action on this short track here at Richmond today. I didn't know it was going to start off a of turn two. The first car with new tires is Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in 24th. Back there with Brad Keselowski, Danica Patrick, Al Marola, Busher, and more. And that'll really pay off if they have a longer green flag run right now. Yeah, it'll pay off a little bit in the short run too, but really on the long run. Eric Jones checked and released at the infield care center and more debris has been found perhaps coming off Eric Jones car as they dragged it back to the garage and that's the case of going back up in the middle of turns three and four to fix that. I know somebody that really didn't want to see this caution. That's Matt Kenzie. Oh, yeah. Did you that's see that launch he got he on the gone, start? Baby. He was taken off. Yeah, that's why I say I don't think we're going to see the same result on this restart because I know that 21 and that 78 are not going to let Matt get away this time. Well, let's remember that now they have a feel for the track conditions and whether you know the car's turning if it's loose in they can adjust brake bias they can adjust their track bar so this will be different. Circle K on Matt's car this week. First time it's Circle Kansas, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, he KO'd the field in qualifying. He did, Mike. Yes, he did. <laughs> kind of like the way the Cubs took advantage of the Red Sox yesterday. Wow. That would have been fun to be at Fenway. They are for real, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Well, champs, here we go. Green flag in the air. And again, Kenseth and Truex on the inside get a real good start. Yeah, but here Blaney, comes Blaney. Yeah, Blaney makes a great big dive down into turn one, trying to get the outside of Kenseth. Not going to happen there. Yeah, I, I just think that outside, that first go round on that first start was a little dirty, but now it's cleaned off. That's going to come alive. Three wide down the back straightaway further back. Well, they were four wide in turn two, and who was the car way up on the outside? Dale Jr. At 88, yeah. got new tires on going down the front right here, three wide in a big barrel of traffic. Oh, well, he's going to go four wide down here, one and Did two. Did it again. Yep. Ooh, not going to work. 32 slides up in front of him. Got to go where they're not. I see a little smoke off the 32. Maybe some uh, damage to the left front. Second place. Truex trying to take advantage of Blaney, but Ryan Blaney gets such a good run up and off the corner. Yeah, he likes that outside. It's worked pretty good for him. We saw that in practice. A lot of cars could run that high line and make exceptionally good time. Well, and what you can do here, you can pin that car down on the inside, make life a little bit difficult for them, make them, force them to use up those tires early, and then we see Blaney get clear of Truex. Truex's car was so good around the bottom in practice. Looks pretty good right now as well. So Blaney establishes second for the moment. Uh, Truex right back alongside, second place. And here's Chris Neville. And two weeks in a row, Eric Jones finds the wall. Eric, good to see you're okay. What happened there? Uh, I got ran around the wall on lap one. Uh, we're three wide on lap one of a 400 lap race. And the five just squeezed me into the fence off of two and uh, was doing all I could not to wreck all of us. And apparently we got a tire cut after that. Blew a left front going into three and destroyed our race car. So it's really unfortunate. Made three laps or whatever. And, um, you know, we're loaded up and going home. So it's disappointing. I think we had a pretty good car. But uh, we'll just have to come back next week stronger. Thanks, Eric. I'll tell you what, I just saw something. I didn't think it was going to work. That's a 78, 18, and 21. Three wide up there in the middle of one and two, but they pulled it off. The 21 of Blaney went up the racetrack and who stuffed it in there in the middle? Kyle Busch. Oh, imagine that. That's a shock. <laughs> well, now, Kurt Busch has had trouble all weekend. They had electrical problems in practice. First a spark plug wire, then they thought a battery problem, and now this. Pullback working, 14.0 on bolts. They said try to shut it off and then uh, recrank the uh, cool box, see if it'll reset itself. That I already tried. Ooh, that's not going to go over very well. I was already talking day. about how hot it is. It's, it's not only hot, it's very humid. And on days like that, now, he'll have fluid, so hopefully. And, and that will certainly help keep him hydrated. But you want that air box blowing some air around inside that car. Not only that, but I saw Kurt walking through the garage area an hour and a half before the start of the race, already had his fire suit on, getting acclimated to the heat. Well, he's a man of constant sorrow. 
They have had, ever since they won the Daytona 500, they have had issue after issue after issue. And here we are again. And look how hot it is inside the car. This is Denny Hamlin's car. We've got a uh, thermostat inside there reading 121, almost 122 degrees. Now that sensor is down next to his hip. Uh, the readout is up here on the side of the headrest so our camera can capture it. Thanks to Mike Wheeler and that team for allowing us that little bit of information. 120 inside the car, 90 degree ambient temperature, action all the way around the track. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. By KFC's new spicy crispy zinger chicken sandwich. It's finger licking good. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Matt Kenseth, your leader from the pole. He's led all 27 laps with the biggest movers since the restart. Kyle Larson and Brad Keselowski. Also Ty Dillon, Dale Jr., Eric Almarola on the move. Yeah, all of them on those new fresh Goodyears. You know what I, I just noticed on the scoring monitor, uh, Kenseth running a 23 with a nine, then there's two eights, two sevens, and another nine in the first five cars, all running pretty much the same speed around this racetrack right at this point. Right now we're seeing the line really wide now. You see Ryan Blaney there went down in turn three and four, went almost all the way to the wall. Here he goes again up to about that third lane down to one and two, but yet you've got the 31 of Ryan Newman going by on the inside right around the bottom. So Vince Ryan Blaney fighting for sixth after starting on the outside pole. Yeah, his third front row start of the season, but if they've had one issue this weekend, it's been their short run speed. And Crew Chief Jeremy Bullens told me we want to fire off better today. He said, and if we do, I think we're going to have a really good day because our car has been better on the long run. But they didn't fire off so great here at the start. They dropped a few positions. You know, guys, I've been watching Kevin Harvick in this four car. He's running fourth. He has a pretty good cushion over fifth place Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And he's a little ways behind Kyle Busch up there in third. He has been playing this racetrack from the yellow line to the wall, especially down in three and four, just trying to find grip and find lap time. You know, we've already slowed down up in the 24 second bracket now. The track record here, 21 seven, I think it is something in that range. So, man, uh, the pace has really dropped off in a hurry. 
Meanwhile, Kurt Busch continues to lose spots, Matt, six of them since the restart. Mike, during final practice, Kurt Busch told his team there was some kind of malfunction with his AC unit. The team changed that out last night, put a brand new one in the car. He has a brand new unit in there right now. It's now malfunctioned, so there's evidently something amiss in the wiring that they're not going to be able to fix. They're going to hand him water bottles through the window at each stop. This little group right here, man, I'm telling you, they're all over each other, all over the racetrack. Everybody looking for an advantage, and they can't find one. Right there, three wide, four wide. Look at this that, gaggle yeah, that's of cars. That that, Danica in the middle there as well. Almendinger on the outside. That's the group. They were four wide going into turn one, three wide all the rest of the way around this racetrack. Unbelievable. And Swore is right there. He would like to make it four wide if he could down this front. This is the result of a hot, slick racetrack. Goodyear came last year with a newer tire that had, that really lays rubber and seems to widen out the groove. Less downforce in the cars. Uh, this is fun to watch. Oh, yeah, man. Well, then let's take a look at today's Liberty Mutual Insurance worry less strategy, Larry. Well, Mike, this would have been for all 40 drivers, but in particular now, the report we're getting on Kurt Busch in that 41 car and his crew chief, Tony Gibson. Stay cool and comfortable. It's one of the hottest races we've run this year. You saw it. Cot cockpit temperature over 120 degrees. What Kurt has to let Tony know, what he needs on the next pit stop. Water, ice bags, it doesn't matter. Just don't wait too late. Don't be a hero here. Let me know what you need, what I can help you do. Hey, Mike, every, you know we talk about a lot of cars. You mean like five cars under a blanket? <laughs> yeah, five or six of them all yes. over each other. It's incredible. Larry, you, you know, we talk and document this a lot. Kurt Busch inside the car, his passion. He's a great communicator. He, he gives a lot of great detail to Tony Gibson and that team. But when he's hot and this starts to affect him later in the race, frustration could very easily kind of come into play and make it very difficult to tune on this car. It's one old Tony Gibson going to have to get on that radio and calm, calm him down. down. I love this battle. Austin Dillon, I can't believe that the sides on that car is still straight because he has been threading the needle in this pack of cars back and forth. you got Danica Patrick. you got Landon Castle, A.J. Allmendinger, Dillon, Trevor Bain, and right behind all of them, Paul Menard just kind of looking in, hoping this sorts out so then he can make a move. And, Mike, the eye of the needle is not very big. No, it's not. <laughs> All oh, that's of little concern to Matt Kenseth. His Toyota's led every one of the 39 laps so far, the only laps he's so far led this year.
That's a reasonable facsimile of Matt Kenseth. He's the guy that's been making all the big moves. Leading every one of 45 laps so far here in Richmond. Look at those moves. Reminds me of what Carl Edwards said about him. He said, what did y'all do with the real Matt Kenseth? <laughs> oh, no, he's out there leading this race from the pole. First he's, laps he's led this year. And he's your Toyota top performer with Martin Truex and Kyle Busch right behind. And Denny Hamlin, who started the race 16th up to ninth. If you haven't, if you haven't led any, why don't you just go ahead and lead them all? <laughs> That'll put that to rest. I think right now, Matt's probably the only car I see that just consistently runs the same line over and over and over every lap that he's been out there so far. Well, you can see how long it's been since Joe Gibbs Racing went this deep into the season without a victory. Now, two cars bear note, one for backing up, one for jumping ahead. The backup car is Ryan Blaney, who started second. He's now 14th. And the moving up car is Brad Keselowski. Keselowski restarted seventh, broke into the top five five laps ago. Now he's in fourth, trying to chase down Kyle Busch, Matt. And Mike, Brad Keselowski told me before the race that his car is not a short run car at all. Really struggling with that type of a format. He's hoping that Larry Mack's usual trends of some long runs here at Richmond will come to fruition. It really comes in and working the track bar adjuster, trying to work some of that free out of the two. Well, a couple laps ago, that was the fastest car on the racetrack. He had two tenths of a second on the field. As you see, a lot of different lines here. That's Timmy Hill in the middle as Clint Boyer goes down to catch him one lap down. Well, let's not forget, too, with Keselowski, not only does he have a good car in the long runs, he came in and took four tires on that caution. You know, one thing that I love about day racing, it's hot, it's slick, and the reason we're having cars run all over this racetrack is for that very reason. If it was a night race, they'd all be hovering around the bottom, trying to run that bottom lane. Here today, you can run anywhere you want to. And that's why track president Dennis Bickmeyer, his boss Clay Campbell, and the ISC people moved this race permanently to Sunday from being a Saturday night race. They wanted to see more passing, see more excitement. And today, boy, we're getting it. Boy, we sure are. And you know, one, the reason why drivers and cars gravitate up towards the top, when you try to get on the brakes and you're, you're losing grip with the tires every single lap, you try to get on the brakes to go to the bottom and tax those front tires and rear tires, it's just easier on everything to drift up. Let the car sort of dance and walk itself up Get it turned where the car wants to turn, then ease back in that throttle, and you have more momentum coming off the corner when you come off that top line off those corners. I call that the slide factor. You gotta put that little slide factor in there, and you slide right up to the wall. Now Kyle Busch running third, but dropping from the leader and about to be overhauled by Brad Keselowski. Chris? Yeah, you can see the 18 just a little bit tight in the center there, and he and his crew chief, Adam Stevens, trying to formulate a game plan for this first pit stop. And Adam Stevens says he's so good here because he's willing to compromise. Even though he'd like to see an adjustment, Adam Stevens is trying to tell him, let's be a little bit patient and let's see how this track changes. Keselowski trying to complete the pass here. And does. Well, we're a little over halfway in stage one here, 53 laps. And uh, it's kind of settled into a, which line do I want to run, high or low? What I'm curious to see with the line moving around, will it stay like that? I've seen where it goes up high, you start laying rubber down, all of a sudden they start gravitating back towards the middle, back down to the bottom. I just, I just kind of like where Matt Kent is running. He has not gotten off that yellow line. No, he doesn't have to. He's got a good race car. And then you're following along here with Chase Elliott. He searched every square inch of this racetrack so far in this race, trying to find that groove that works best for him and gets the lap time. That's a good lap there. You're actually running Blaney down three cars ahead of you. Yeah, inside the car on that digital dash, these drivers are able to get the lap time. It pops up on their dash every single lap, but it does help having the spotter looking out there, seeing what other cars are doing, where they're running, and which cars you're running down. I, I like what Clint Boyer said. I think Larry told us that he said, you need to drive in a little harder. He said, I'm so loose, that's the best I can do. 
Vince Ryan Blaney started on the front row. He was just passed by Joey Logano in a similar car that started in the last row. What's up with the 21? Boy, he has really got a handful right now. Ryan Blaney says the car is just way loose in, and then they can't connect the corner at all. He needs more help in the center, and the drive off isn't very good either. So that's the trifecta certainly looking for some help at this pit stop when it comes available. And Mike, I think the aero package we have now, that real small rear spoiler, you drive in the corner hard, you're on the brakes, you don't have enough rear blade back there to hold the back of the car, and it makes you really loose in. Now these two have passed and repassed each other several times already for sixth place. Brian Newman in the 31, Ricky Stenhouse in the 17. And Denny Hamlin is about to catch them. All this for sixth place, eight seconds behind the leader, who continues to be Matt Kenseth in that Joe Gibbs Toyota. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet, the most awarded car company three years in a row. By AARP, real possibilities. And by Budweiser, pursuing the American dream since 1876. This Bud's for you. 64 laps complete, 36 to go in this stage. You're riding with Brad Keselowski for second place. Car wall turn four, Stenhouse. Might have had a little help as he battled Denny Hamlin for position. These two have been going oh, at they, it, battling. They've been racing really, really hard, that little group right there. And Stenhouse has been right out against that wall the last several laps. We are under caution. The caution that Brad Keselowski did not want to see. And I think he was going to go up there and get the lead. Racing for seventh place down the back stretch. Boy, yeah, look, just looked like Stenhouse got in there a little hot, got a little bit loose, stepped out, couldn't catch it. There's a great angle. Oh. Yeah, there was, I don't think there was any contact. Come on, come on, player, all player. Boy, nice job of Denny by staying off Ricky staying Stenhouse. Off, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, no Hamlin contact. made no contact. I, I do think there's a little bit of a domino effect. Yeah, here we go on, on with Kyle Larson. I think he got in the back of, oh, not really. I thought he got into the back of Dale and her Jr., but not at all. Here's what Denny said. If he wanted a race, let's race, but what an idiot. <laughs> well, okay, no, write that down. That's our first if idiot. If you've been of the watching day. this battle, they, they had been running one another really hard, not wanting to give up that spot. Pit road's open, Matt. 
And Brad Keselowski, he needed more help getting some good grip. And remember, he was working that track bar over the course of that run. A little bit fresher tires than the rest. Meanwhile, the 78, Chris Neville, he needs more grip, especially left rear. And Kyle Busch saying the car's still a little bit too tight in the center of the corner. Also some splitter contact, so a wedge adjustment for tires. Vince? The 20 of Matt Kenseth, bottom right. He's led all the laps so far. Says it's a little loose, but he don't want to change it. Just four tires and away. Pretty good race off pit road there between the 78 and the 2. Matt Kenseth leads them all off pit road. Second caution of the day, David Reagan will get the free pass. Trouble for Ricky Stenhouse. No number one. The speeding police have nabbed three on pit stops. Kyle Busch, too fast entering the pits in one of those pie-shaped sections where if you're on the inside, you're going to travel less time than if you're on the outside. For Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Chris Buescher, they were too fast exiting, so they will restart at the tail end of the longest line. Speed is a calculation, not a measurement. It is distance over time, miles per hour. But in some of these segments that are pie-shaped, if you're on the inside, the distance NASCAR measured is a constant. But it takes less time to go that far than it takes to go that far. And drivers sometimes get nailed. Yeah, and so that was the section we believe Kyle Busch was in. The section that uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was in was further down pit road. And this section that you're seeing on TV. Now, I will say that we watched several cars practice pit road yep. and 18 was one of them that came down several times. I'm a little bit surprised they were one of those that, that were penalized. You know who was just as surprised? Dale Earnhardt Jr. Listen. That was two yellows, not one orange, and then it's the two orange. I had one dot, one orange. Well, man, I'm not losing a lot of faith in this. I can't do it much differently than that. Y'all gonna have to get a little better, a little less aggressive. Something. Catch up for me. That's on us. No, a lot of a lot of what he's talking about is in certain sections, they feel like they can run, ramp that speed up and then slow it down in other sections. I think he just needs to hold a constant. He's, uh, the, Greg, I've said that's on us, and they yeah. know how close it was. It's just asking a little bit too much, in my opinion, out of the drivers on pit road for so little gain. Back under green, three and wide, Larson <laughs> to the top side. Shocking. 
Larson was really starting to use that outside. I mean, he was right up against the wall the last several laps there before that caution. He was making some good time up there. Every week he goes dirt track racing somewhere. He's, he gets to here to the uh, NASCAR Cup Series, and he doesn't mind throwing it up top and sliding it around some more. Hamlin to the inside of Ryan Newman. And from the back, boy, Kyle Busch has been going three and four wide, trying to make up some of that lost ground from the penalty. There he is, top of the yeah. picture. Oh, he's doing He's trying he's, to go three and four he's wide. He's going three four wide. He's using the front bumper. He's using every tactic he has. There he goes. There he up goes on the outside wide. right there. And uh, we're told Kyle Busch made some contact back there. No, he made a lot of contact. Oh. <laughs> he, was, okay. he was all over the place there for a few laps. So he gets a big run off the top. Ooh, that's how you cut a left rear tire down or a right front tire is that kind of contact. You know what I love? I've heard these drivers say they race harder back here than they do up front. Because they have to? Because they have to <laughs> yep. keep up. Third place. Larson and Harvick, Vince. Yeah, Kyle Larson, and this may be a bad sign for what's to come for the 42. He said, I don't think the fans are working on the floor because my feet are roasting. Going to be hot enough inside that car, but then to have your feet on fire can't be good at the beginning of this race. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, Jeff, you know, I've had that happen. It'll burn, a, it'll burn a blister on the back of that hill in a heartbeat. Yeah, the teams have done a great job insulating the floor, but you still need to move some air around there. And that's what they'll do. They'll take one of those hoses with an, uh, an inline fan, and that's what they talk about, the blowers and the fans, and it just moves air inside the car, even around their feet. Yeah, we put cups or anything on the bottom of our heels, keep from burning, but it didn't always work. And I've noticed Kyle Larson, he runs those little booties on his heel that protect him from the heat yeah. already. They're obviously not working right now. You're going to have to shake that booty. Kyle Busch racing for 22nd with Danica Patrick and well, Paul Menard. He has a really fast race car. He just has nowhere to go. He's nope. going to have to go three and four wide because they're side by side ahead of him. Daniel Suarez trying to follow Bush up through there. Now, Clint Boyer in eighth place. His boss, Tony Stewart's had a lot of success here at Richmond, Matt. And Clint Boyer battling a loose race car, trying to make some headway and under caution. He got a few suggestions from the boss. I think where you're at on the racetrack is where you really need to be. That, that zone you work, that whole run, that, that's all the higher I think you really want to be right now. Yeah, it's important. I mean, I'm, some of those guys made some speed up there, but I think it's too early to be showboat. <laughs> and I, I, I told you, it is a little treacherous up there. We just saw with Ricky Stenhouse. If you get a little bit loose, you hit the wall, and you do some pretty serious damage. And we've been hearing that drivers are really maxing out their track bar. A lot of cars are in a loose condition, so moving that track bar down on the right rear helps pin the right rear. We've heard some of them dropping the, the track bar two to three inches are asking, how far can I go with the track bar? Well, it's over 90 degrees out there, ambient temperature. The track temp's got to be about 130 now. We're going to keep it right here for you with 20 laps to go in stage one at Richmond.
87 laps complete at Bristol, 13 to go in stage one. Last week at Bristol, Kyle Larson led all of stage one. Matt Kenseth is trying to do the same. As you look at the fourth place battle, that's Brad Kozlowski to the inside of Kevin Harvick. He's down there looking, but boy, it's hard to get under somebody and make any kind of, to be able to accelerate off the corner when you're underneath somebody like he is. Harvey might be able to get it done here. Larry, what you got, bud? Well, just looking at Brad Keselowski, and Matt Yoakum touched on this on that two car. It's been 15 laps since we went back racing. They told me this morning, they hope this thing has long green flag runs. That's what they need because they're not very good on the short run with that two car. That's something that two car and the 22 of Joey Logano have really been working on. We've seen them have tremendous short run speed uh, the last past uh, couple of years, and now they've got the long run speed. And then look behind that, Denny Hamlin. If anybody has long run speed here at, at this racetrack, it's Denny Hamlin. He really knows how to get the rear tires hooked up up off the corner. Yeah, at the top of the show, we talked about not looking too hard at the starting lineup or the practice sheet. Hamlin concentrated all weekend on making his car comfortable, said he's very happy with it. And that's evident as he's knocking on the door of the top five. That was a pretty nice move right there by Keselowski trying to get to the outside pick. Use that pick in the lap car that they came up on. And there he goes. He's going to get to the quarter panel. All he needs to do is just get there. And I think he'll have an advantage and be able to make this pass. But he doesn't do it. He runs out of room off of two. Opening up the door for Hamlin. Hamlin is so easy on the throttle. I love the way that man drives a short track. Smooth, consistent. Takes care of the tires, takes care of the car. That's why you. That's how you win short track races. Yeah, watch Hamlin, what he does. His technique here is amazing. He drives it so nice and easy and just lets the car roll down to the bottom and then eases on that throttle like you're saying, DW. Yeah, I, I'm not in the car, but it just didn't look like he used a lot of brake. He just lets the momentum of the car roll in there and then he eases back in that gas. There's a look at the gas pedal, upper right. Something you'll see here at Richmond, especially as we get more and more laps on the tires, these hot temperatures, he won't get wide open in full throttle until pretty far off the wall or off the corner. And this is his place. Denny Hamlet, as an 11 year old, sat in the grandstand here. Then became a winner here. He comes in here, feels this is his house. Yeah, Mike, uh, that 22 car Logano starting rear with a transmission change, and he has done a really, really nice job, just like his teammate uh, Keselowski done a really nice job of getting himself into the top ten. He's going to get some stage points, looks like. Yeah, he's got three quarters of a second on Chase Elliott for that final stage point, as we're just six to go in stage one. Look how, uh, can you get any closer without a hit? I mean, that 42 is scraping the wall. Almost. <laughs> well, well, watch him get in the corner. He gets in there really nice and high. Wow. Back here, 12th place. Eric Almarola, Jimmy Johnson. Here comes Ty Dillon to be part of that party. Jimmy Johnson felt like his car was a little bit better than this in practice. Uh, a little bit surprised that he hasn't moved forward more even though they didn't qualify very well don't you think it's a little early for him to really start <laughs> yeah well, it's stage one totally what are we talking laps. about <laughs> guys real quick on ty dillon i was talking to his crew chief booty barker this morning up in that 13 hauler ty came up in there booty walked through the list of things they changed on that car last night and he says here's what our simulation tells us you'll have he said but i'm also going to tell you we're penalized for practice next week it took us so long to make all these changes wow <laughs> Yeah, computers are driving a lot of these setups that are on the cars these days through simulation there. Two to go in stage one. Let's quickly recap the drivers who had speeding penalties on that stop. They had to come from the back. Kyle Busch is up to 18th. Dale Jr. to 22nd. Chris Busher to 25th. You're going to have them. Have them early. Denny Hamlin knocking on the door of Kevin Harvick. Hamlin is trying to get one more spot. And for the first time since stage one back in Daytona in February, Joe Gibbs Racing wins stage one. Boy, Larson also making a big run to the outside. Can he make this stick and get the momentum off of turn four? It'll be a little bit of a drag race here between the 42, but I believe he's got the momentum. Oh, I think the 78 made it. 
No, they said Larson got him. So all the way back to Joey Logano in 10th place coming to the line. Here's the race for second place at the line. Wow, then it was close. <laughs> that looked like that Daytona finish from uh, where Denny Hamlin beat Martin Truex by the same margin. Stage one is history. Matt Kenseth the winner. Denny Hamlin has issues, not so much that it's 134 in the cockpit, but his digital dash went completely black. Everything shut off. They had him cycle the electrical system, and it came back up. Pit road's open, Matt. And Martin Truex Jr.'s guy is up on the wall waiting for that 78. The car started out tight, firing off the beginning of the run, but then it swung to the free side. Air pressure change on that 78. Chris? And Kevin Harvick saying that last adjustment helped him late in the corner, but the car is still way too loose in the center of the corner, asking the team to back that last adjustment out. Vince? Kyle Larson started 18th, pits from second, says the car is good, no changes. Matt Kenseth says, snuck me up a little bit and helped me on the takeoff. The pit crew with another great stop, and he's first off pit road. Matt Kenseth continues leading every lap so far today. Boy, there's been so much action behind him. Uh, 42 nailed a good stop, too. They did a nice job. There's the Kenseth stop. We say we dial up our stage one winner, Matt Kenseth. Hey, Matt, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Uh. <laughs> hey, Matt, this is Jeff up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Hey, Jeff, I got you. Well, man, I know you've been off to a bit of a rough start this season, but you're making up for it today. You are on fire from the pole, leading every lap here, and uh, you guys are getting it done on pit road. Uh, obviously, things are feeling pretty good. 
Uh, it's been a good start, but you know we've had obviously great track position. Uh, Circle K, uh, the old tool third has been fast this weekend. But we haven't been back in traffic yet, um, haven't faced a lot of adversity yet. So we, we got a little work to do on our balance, uh, but we certainly have the speed. So hopefully we can do the right things all day here and uh, keep it up here the rest of the day. Well, all that cycling you've been doing is going to pay off in these hot, slick conditions. Have fun. Congrats. Go do it again. All right, man. You enjoy the air conditioning up there. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. No, it's not. In the fall of 2015, Matt Kenseth led all but 48 laps en route to victory here in Richmond. The Toyota owner is 400 on Fox is sponsored by Carfax. Find the cars you want, avoid the ones you don't. Shop used cars with confidence at Carfax.com. And by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups. Getting ready for stage two, here's Chris Neville. Well, Mike, we've talked about tire bead failures, and we usually see them at tracks where aerodynamics and braking are important. Teams trying to optimize speed, but also cool the brakes. Now, the bead is this edge of the tire that sits inside the wheel, and Goodyear tells teams to try and not let that temperature exceed 350 degrees. Well, they monitor that with this sticker here, and teams can try and go back and forth with cooling to make sure they get the right temperature. You can over-rev a motor, or you can also overheat a tire. Thanks, Chris, at the eBay Motors pit box. We're ready for the restart. Matt Kenseth, Kyle Larson, Martin Truex, Kevin Harvick, Keslowski, Hamlin, Newman, Boyer, McMurray, Logano, the top 10. De Benedetto got the free pass, so we restart with 28 cars on the lead lap through the Geico restart zone, and we're back under green. I believe Kenseth's going to have his hands full now, Mike. I believe that 42 car can maybe get up there, run that high line, and give Kenseth a little bit of a run. Yeah, we've seen the 42 of Larson be pretty good on short runs and long runs. But man, just look at that. The one thing that Matt Kenseth has got going for him, forward bite. That car jumps up off the corner. Kyle Busch, high, wide, and handsome. Here he comes. Oh, oh. he got a little ball high, a little there. too high. Still three top. 
four wide for an instant. Oh my gosh. Goodness. You can't do that. Kyle Busch forgot to remind the, the cars around him he was coming three wide. They just completely ran him into the wall for turn four. Kyle Busch may be the only guy that can do that, but normally you just can't do that. This team's on a mission. <laughs> Joe Gibbs Racing, winless in 2017. And yet three of their four drivers are either in contention or get out of my way, I'm coming through. And they're at a track they know they can win, so they're all fired up. Brad Keselowski may have something to say about that, however, as he brings his Ford to fourth place. Yeah, he went to the outside of Mark Church Jr. and made that pass off a of turn four. Mike, see, the, these restarts are insane. I mean, the way these guys get three and four wide and uh, bumping and grinding and pushing and shoving, love the short tracks, man. Short track action, right, DW? That's it's right. Always good. I love it. Side by side, Newman and Elliott and Almirola. Brothers Austin and Ty battling it out for position as well. Speaking of brothers, I want to be sure and wish Michael, my brother, a happy birthday today. We'll sing you a song later, buddy. <laughs> no cake? We'll get him a cake. Hi. Thank you, big brother. I appreciate that. It's been a great birthday. Any day you're at the racetrack to me is a great day. And what about this racing? Three, four wide? I love it. Seventh place. Denny Hamlin, Jamie Mack. Oh, I just feel like the 11 of Denny Hamlin really dodged a bullet when that caution came out and the dash and the power went out and the engine shut off there for a little bit. Then, he, you know, he how is he going to come down pit road and do pit road speed and look at those lights we hear all the drivers talk about to manage that pit road speed. He got it cycled back up, made a pit stop. Now here he is going again for position. Boy, I tell you, that had to scare the heck out of him because this is a track I know he wants serious, badly to win at. It's a home track, for, home race for Denny Hamlin. Other than pit road speed, if that digital display goes out, is that a big problem for a driver other than pit road speed? No, I don't think it's a, it, there, there's not, other than knowing where your track bar is at, it does read that and, and having lap time, the, the biggest tool that it is, is, is really pit road. But Mike, I think everything is stressed out the electrical system, the batteries and everything, these cars are being asked to do more than they've ever been done before. We'll take a look here at his dash. There it is. Now, like, the, no, no, he, he, uh, the, he freaks out right here. The power went out. Everything on the dash, everything went out at that point. It wasn't just the power to that digital dash. But what I like was he said, tell me what to do, because if I start flipping switches, I might never get it back. So they told him what to do. He did it and it came back. And importantly, the car did not stop running. Uh, he just lost all of his display. Oh, no, I think it did. No, he, I think it did, it Mike, off. Power, or, or he shut when it he off. When he cycled it Maybe off. he right. cycled it. Yeah, right. the power definitely went out there for a, a short period of time uh, on the engine as well. Matt? Mike Wheeler asked any that very question. Did you lose the digital dash or did you lose all power? And Denny reported back, I lost all power whatsoever before he cycled through the ECU. Now back up running well. Heck of a battle right here, Mike, between the two, the, the four, the two, and the 78. They are fighting hard for third place. I think what I'd be more concerned with right now, it's everything's back up and running, is why did that happen? And will it happen again? Sure. Heat. I think it's just hot. Car's hot. It's just a hot day. Big, big load from running all the brake fans and the exactly. fans inside on the driver as well. Got a blower on everything, man. And cool the brakes, the tires, the driver, the engine. Here's the battle for third. There's those red and white stripe walls we spoke of. Back in the day when Winston sponsored the sport, they sent thousands of gallons in red and white paint to all of the tracks. And the walls were red and white strobe striped. And Richmond's bringing a little of that feel back. There's for a, this race. The guy that paints these walls, his name is Randy, and forgive me for not knowing his last name, but his name is Randy, and I know that these tracks, those guys that maintain these tracks, they take great pride in what they do. Randy Camden. And not only is it the effect kind of bringing back a little old school action in NASCAR, in NASCAR here, but the cars just look faster. They just look a lot faster when they're up against that red and white backdrop. Watch this. We'll show you. Gives you a great sense of speed. That's fast. Now, and to the fellow on Twitter who says, "Every how come every time when you go to crank it up, you speed the cars up?" <laughs> mm, 
No, we don't. We no, just we don't, don't pan the cameras with the cars like that to keep them centered and in focus. <laughs> All right, 124 laps complete. Let's get to Chris Neville with a nationwide Dale Jr. performance report. Well, Dale Jr. made that big announcement this week, and he said it was a big weight off my shoulders, and he feels so much more relaxed. And he said he remembered when Steve Letarte announced his retirement, and he started calling races more aggressive. He said he just had a lot more freedom. Well, both Dale Jr. and crew chief Greg Ives say they're feeling the same way. Greg Ives said, we're still going to go after wins, but we want to make sure that we enjoy this last season. We're not piling on any more pressure. Dale Jr. right now saying his car just a little bit of tight. I, uh, one thing I hope for Dale Jr., I think it would be good for him if he could have a great run today. And where are we going next week? Oh, yeah. Oh, His baby. wheelhouse. That's the home it. Of Junior Nation. Get a little momentum here and then go into Talladega next week. Third place. Junior. Keselowski to the inside of Kevin Harvick. Two Fords battling behind a Toyota and a Chevrolet. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. By Pizza Hut, no one out pizzas the hut. And by Toyota, let's go places. 133 laps complete, four dominated qualifying here, but right now the top 10 very evenly matched, although Toyota was strongest in practice. Side by side for third place. I told y'all the four and the two were going to be tough today. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at our McDonald's McCafe refreshing picks of the race. You got to pick two. Matt Kenseth is the no brainer. He's led every one of 134 laps so far. And my other pick. Well, we agreed on Brad Keselowski because that four keeps working its way toward the front. He and Kevin Harvick both caught and passed Kyle Larson a couple of laps ago. And in the top 10 right now, three Toyotas, four Fords, three Chevrolets. That's as evenly matched as things get. Hey, that four car, though, I keep watching him, Mike. Uh, 
He's, I, he's closing that gap on our leader here, Matt Kenson, quite a bit over the last several laps. Yeah, the two car, Brad Keselowski, was really working on uh, Kevin Harvick, getting to the inside, getting to the outside. And whatever Kevin adjusted there in his line or the car came to him, he's really starting to find some speed right here in this part of the run. Chris? And Jeff, that last round, he wanted the car to be tightened up in the center, and he said, we've definitely done that. Better forward drive getting off the corner. And one thing he did say is the brake pedal, a little bit soft. A little bit soft in that four car, but the team's saying not a problem. So I don't know if the team is trying something new this weekend. Vince? Well, and that line that the four car is taking is the co topic of conversation between Matt Kenseth and his spotter, Jason Hedleski. Hedleski letting Matt Kenseth know exactly where the fast guys behind him are running. Right now, Kenseth keeping it stuck to the bottom. Says the balance feels great, and this is really fun to drive. My, interesting enough, the four car is running through the middle of the racetrack. He's not in the bottom. He's not in the top. He's kind of running a middle groove which not many cars have been able to do, so that might be working for him. It's like there's a seam, just one lane up, and he's putting the left side tires either on or just below that seam and hooking it and getting a good run. You can see how much rubber's been laid down by the right side of the tires in that very bottom groove. I'm wondering if a little bit of grip has been lost in that very bottom groove. I think you're right, because the difference is, is Harvick is not as fast as Matt Kenseth or Brad Keselowski over these last four laps or so. Jimmy Johnson going for three in a row. 11th time in his career, he's gone back to back. Trying to three-peat here, Matt. Mike, Jimmy told me the one thing that stands out to him about racing at Richmond this weekend, it's almost taking a page out of Darlington, where you have to be easier on your tires, you can easily hurt them. He told me the one thing that stood out to him about the car this weekend, it was just so easy to drive. He didn't have to hustle it. He didn't slip and slide, and he didn't have to pedal it. But that has certainly changed today. It's been free most of the day. An adjustment on the last stop has certainly helped the 48. He's coming to life. He's in 13th right now. In the top 10 are seven drivers looking for their first win of the year. Seven out of the top 10. I think the chances are pretty good of that happening today. I was just wondering, DW, anybody ever won four in a row from the pole? It's only happened one time that I know of. Really? Do you know who that was? <laughs> um, could it have been the man standing to your right? <laughs> Jeff Gordon? No, no. It's no? the man standing between your us. Right. <laughs> oh, to my right, Darrell Waltrip. Okay. That's impressive. That's, That's a, why he's a Hall of Famer. Little known fact. Just a little known fact. <laughs> Quite a battle right here. Ricky Stenhouse trying to get back to the front. Ryan Blaney holding station at 17th. Trevor Bain and Kurt Busch. And Chris Busher. Larry. Hey, guys, I just want to remind you, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that 17 car just moved to 17th position. He was the caution at lap 65 and actually hit that wall pretty hard. He was on the five-minute crash clock. A big attaboy to Brian Patty and that crew. There he's back up there trying to get back to the top 15. He's saying, I'm loose, I'm loose, I'm loose, and they finally tightened him up after he hit the so wall. So is everybody else. <laughs> That's right. Last lap by, there were only two cars faster than Stenhouse. That was Harvick in second, and Matt Kenseth, your leader.
We're halfway in stage two at Richmond International Raceway. 49 to go now. Matt Kenseth leading his first laps of the year. And boy, he's saved it up. He's led all 151 laps today in his uh, Joe Gibbs Toyota. The Stuart Haas Ford for Brad Keselowski has been to Victory Lane at Atlanta and at Martinsville. Two-time winner in second. Seven drivers starting with Kenseth and on to Kevin Harvick looking for their first win of the year. Harvick in third, 2.3 seconds back. Kyle Larson, winner in California at Auto Club Speedway in fourth place, five seconds back of the lead. Martin Truex, the winner at Las Vegas in fifth place, 5.7 seconds back. And the rest of the top 10 all looking for their first win of the season. Clint Boyer backing it up with another good run here at Richmond. Thinks he had a car that can win today. Maybe he does. Denny Hamlin, this is his home track, and he feels it's his place. Had a car in practice that was very comfortable. He's in seventh, seven seconds back. Jamie McMurray, again, both Chip Ganassi cars running in the top 10. McMurray in eighth, eight seconds back. And three laps ago, Ty Dillon gave a little bump and hello to Joey Logano out of turn two. Logano moved aside, and Dillon made the pass and went on for ninth place. Here's a look at it. And Logano holds down the anchor spot in the top ten. Larry? Yeah, just watching Ty Dillon, I know we touched on him earlier about all the changes that Booty Barker's crew chief made. And of course, he is a rookie this year. But he has run a number of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series races. He has never had a top 10 finish, but had a good top 15 at Bristol last week. So this team really starting to build. You know, Larry, one of the things that a lot of the younger drivers always ask me, what do I need to do? And I tell them, run all the laps. Try to try to put a try to try to close the deal out. Don't run good all day and then wreck it in. Yeah, don't go out there trying to impress anybody, right? Yeah. Just just really learn all that you can learn about the cars, the track. Yep. Now, getting back up to the front, let's again pick up on the cars that were uh, busted for speeding back at, on the second caution of the day. Kyle Busch is back up to 14th. Dale Earnhardt Jr., 23rd. And Chris Busher, 20th. So, boy, a penalty can really put you... For far back for a long time here, Chris. And Mike, Kyle Busch, pretty aggressive about trying to work his way through the field, but that slowed here in the last couple laps. He said the back end of that car just sliding around way too much on entry and exit. He said he's also dealing with some brake shake in that car. Brake shake. This is one of the toughest tracks as we see Denny Hamlin go to the outside here, 14 of Clint Boyer. This is one of the toughest tracks on brakes. You have, you have long straightaways. Uh, they can cool those brakes down, but then you're pretty hard on the brakes. You're carrying a lot of speed, 130, 140 miles per hour going in these corners, and so you'll heat those brakes up, and you get a lot of pad buildup on those rotors or maybe even a little bit of warp in those rotors, especially when they cycle from a caution and, and heat up under a pit stop. And I've, I've had some of the biggest issues I've ever had on, with brakes here at this racetrack, Larry. Yeah, Jeff, I talked to the brake specialist with Chip Ganassi racing this morning, looks after the brakes on Jimmy McMurray's one car and Kyle Larson's 42. And he said, we have a lot more brake shake that exists seemingly with Kyle Larson than we do Jamie. But he says, Kyle really pumps the brake pedal a lot to keep the nose locked down, especially to get the car to turn when he can't be on the throttle. He said, for that matter, we experience it a lot more with Kyle than we do Jamie. Yeah, that's a good point, Larry. The, the best thing you can do on brakes is get on the brakes really hard, heat them up, then get all the way off the brakes. When you taper those brakes, when you modulate that brake, which is the way I did, uh, especially here at Richmond, you'll have a lot more brake issues. You know, Matt Kent has led a lot of laps, but he better not look back now because that two car is on his bumper. Heavy traffic just ahead. Cole Witt, Michael McDowell, Paul Menard. Kislowski is there. I mean, he's got a little wee bit better car than Kenseth's right at this point. And that's the first time today that's happened. Thirty-eight laps to go in stage two. Matt Kenseth holding on to a tenuous lead here.
The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, by Cialis, and by Toyota. Let's go places. Time for a KFC Zinger race break. Michael Walter, Chris Myers, moments ago, approaching lap 170 of 400, and Brad Kozlowski surpassing Matt Kenseth. Kenseth led the first 163 laps of this race. By the way, 1970, the record held by Richard Petty led the first 303 laps of the Richmond race, but did not win that race. James Hilton did. Hilton. Uh was behind Petty had some issues and he got to victory lane on his only victory up to that point in his career. Meanwhile, Matt Kenseth at age 45 on the pole leading his first laps in today's race. He's joked about he said if Tom Brady can play until he's 45 or so and win Super Bowls I'm going to hang around and win races. Uh, yeah not only does he run the Cup Series he likes to go back to Wisconsin and run some short track racing. This cat's still a racer at, at his age. He's certainly very fast dominant early but this is the guy I've got my eye on Chris. You see 142 degrees in that car first of all. Hamlin's up to fifth. He's slow and steady on the restarts. He really paces himself. He's patient and now that's paying off the last few laps that 11 car has been the fastest car on the track just like my sources told me down in the garage here that's right and you were there jimmy johnson finished 13th in stage one which was won by matt kenton he's trying to win his third straight race he's done that once he's won four in a row once where do you like his positioning so far? They need an adjustment or two. He just doesn't have the pace, the speed to move up. He's been stuck between 12th and 15th this whole race. Obviously, Jimmy can get it done here at Richmond, but right now that low Chevy isn't working for him. Yeah, and in the top 20, Bain, Trevor Bain is 20th, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 15th, Roush Fenway racing. I mean, if the playoffs were to have started today, we know they don't, but both of those guys would be in the chase. Yeah, and Bain started back in the 29th position. And just think about this. Kyle Busch went to the back after a speeding penalty. He's only been able to rally up to 14th. Stenhouse was in a wreck earlier. He hit the wall. He's been able to recover from that. He's running in 15. So these are fast Roush Fenway Fords. These guys are doing a good job. If they can make some improvements, they can get a top 10. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. battling at that 21st, 22nd position. He did make it up into the top 10. Had a pit road speeding penalty, which has been a case for a few drivers. That knocked him back somewhat in the first race since his Tuesday announcement that this is his final season as a driver in NASCAR full-time. Yeah, and he's creeping into danger of going a lap down. Brad Kozlowski's car is fast on the long run, and he's starting to put some cars, some great cars, laps down. Now, this has been your KFC Zinger race break. Let's head back upstairs to Daryl, Jeff, and Mike. 26 laps to go in stage two. A.J. Allmendinger has gone to the garage area. The rear end is up in the air because that's a mechanical problem. He could repair that and return to competition. Brad Kozlowski, your leader, Matt Kenseth, has now fallen almost two seconds back, Vince. Yeah, the 20 car, which had a, such a perfect balance during the early stages of the race, as the guys in the Hollywood Hotel noted, led the first 163 laps. But now the balance has swung tight, especially through the middle, and Matt says he is plowing the center. I think that was an observation Jeff made, and I totally agree. That bottom groove has picked up a lot of rubber. You can see where those right side tires have just laid down a really, really black groove. That changes the balance of the car from push to loose or loose to push, whatever your condition might be. I think that's what Matt Kitts is dealing with. Yeah, and that's what makes the best drivers and the best teams. They've got to give that information, and then that team has to go and try to find the best way to adjust to help that condition. Or if they can't do that, Matt might have to get off the bottom and search around a little bit, like we've seen Keselowski and Harvick and a few of these others do. Well, the four car has been running in the middle of the race. He doesn't run real high, and he doesn't run real low. He runs kind of right through the middle, just to above that real black streak on the bottom. Well, as Brad Keselowski took the lead on lap 164, his spotter, Joey Meyer, helped him worry less with our Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. All around, whatever you want here. Three wide bottom, three wide, two wide outside, right corner. 7220 right corner, car width to your right, car width to your right if you need to move up, still outside, outside, even, 72, your nose ahead, one back, 20 behind him, 72 right corner, 27 outside, right corner, clear up, get up, get up, get up, clear, 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 nice job, man, smooth here, 35 to the stage, 35. I love you it know, when you listen to those spotters when they when they get that moment 
They get a little bit more energized when it's for the lead. <laughs> yeah, but you know, of all the voices in my car from the various systems, sure wish I had that kind of blind spot coverage. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've noticed, Mike, the, the, the speeds have changed. We're running 25 second laps now. That's three seconds slower than when we started. Brad Keselowski has yet to win a stage in 2017. Will that happen 19 laps from now? We'll stay right here. Twelve laps to go in stage two at Richmond. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn, making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR, inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. Look at this battle as oh, Brad baby. Keselowski <laughs> works hard to put Danica Patrick in the 10 and Daniel Suarez in the 19 one lap she down. She gave him a little bump down the back straightaway. He said, hey, I don't want to go down a lap. They are fighting, buddy. Matt? Mike, Brad Keselowski would tell you, when he won here back in 2014, he led 383 laps of one of his most uh, special wins, but that really is it. He goes back to when he was 13 years old. It was a great day, but yet an awful day, because Brad Keselowski spent the entire summer with his dad, Bob, traveling the truck series circuit, and his dad didn't win. When Brad went back to school, seventh grade, that first week, his dad won. Couldn't believe it, but great history for the Keselowski family here at Richmond. Keselowski trying to win his first stage of the year, and uh, that was not for the free pass. It was for the free pass position for Patrick. Yeah. Suarez was already a lap down, now two. I'm impressed with this 13 car, though. Booty Barker, Larry documented earlier all the changes they made to that car before the race started, and buddy, they are working. He's in 10th place, 1.2 seconds ahead of Joey Logano in the uh, fight for the last stage point. It's going to be settled here in nine laps. Now, right in front of them, Truex 7th, McMurray 8th, Boyer 9th. Coming up on Greg Galding, hometown uh, home race for Galding. 
from Colonial Heights. Who I'm impressed with is Ryan Newman, who's out ahead of this group. He was behind all of them, the one, the 14, and the 78. He went up past every one of them and is driving away. There's some incredible battles all over the track. Kurt Busch trying to keep him going to lap down, down. I mean, there's a lot of action right here at the end of this second stage. Kurt Busch in the free pass position right now. He better pedal hard. Or hope that Keselowski does not lap Landon Castle I before the stage ends. And, and another battle that's happening is Stuart Haas teammates and Danica Patrick going to the outside of the 41 right here to try to maintain being that free pass car. And, and she, I think she learned a little bit of something riding there with Keselowski. Her car is not bad right now. Ty Dillon again, he just moved up. He caught uh, the 78 of Truex in traffic. Used one of those lap cars as a pick and went on to ninth place because here comes Joey Logano to fight Truex now for the last stage point. The 13 cars having a banner day, Jeff. I think he's running good. Yeah, Truex has really fallen off here these last several laps. I wonder if he's having a problem or is the groove in the line and the grip level just changed so much? My, Jeff, this is the longest green flag run we've had. He's probably out of tires. Now, Dylan has all but caught Clint Boyer and Jamie McMurray as this stage runs toward a close. Matt? Mike, the 78 of Truex has had to move up the racetrack. He's lost all grip. The car just too free on entry, especially on exit. And he's going to lose 10th spot right here. And see, the top is not where he wants to be in practice. He never got off the bottom, that yellow line. That's where they set the car up. That's where he likes to run. If, if it doesn't work down there, it's going to take him a while to adapt to that higher lane or, or, or possibly not at all. I Here's that think... battle I was talking about with teammates. This is just for the free pass when that this stage ends. Patrick in 24th. Right now, she's, 25th. In, she's in the free pass position, yep. so uh, she's driving hard to stay there. Three to go in stage two. And quite honestly, that's a great job when you consider how Kozlowski and some of these other fast cars have been getting around this racetrack that she's in that position. Yeah, what she doesn't want to see, though, is Kozlowski get by the 34, Landon Castle just up ahead of him. Oh, boy. That's going to be close. Two to go, stage two. Man, this just battles all over the place for position. Try not to go that yeah. down. When it comes so much these, action. But Jeff, when it comes into these stages, I mean, it really heats up all the way back through the field. One more lap, and if Landon Castle holds his line, he may be able to stave off Brad Kozlowski and stay on the lead lap. That would benefit Danica Patrick. And Ty Dillon is trying to get another stage point and get past Clint Boyer. Yeah, great. The wrong run car uh, is that 13 has been really good on the long run. The end of stage two. Landon Castle sprints ahead of Brad Kozlowski, who wins his first stage. And for eighth place, Boyer out ahead of Ty Dillon on the bottom. Boyer, eighth, Dillon, ninth, Logano, tenth. That's what I love about stages. They fight hard for those positions. Yes, sir. They want those playoff points in, the, in those stage points. Well, that, be big. Is that a caution-free stage? It was. Right. Keselowski, the winner.
If I could go through history and pick out anybody I wanted to meet me in Victory Lane, I'd probably pick Nikolai Tesla, a really cool innovator, inventor, who's way ahead of his time, and I'd really like to meet him and see what he thought about this whole racing deal. Well, that's digging deep. Tesla, born in Austria, worked, came to the America, was a naturalized citizen, worked for Thomas Edison, and then created the AC electrical supply system, his AC motors, alternating current motors, and related polyphase patents were licensed by Westinghouse in 1888. I Kurt Busch would like to meet him too I was right gonna say, now. and Denny Hamlin. <laughs> and everybody having electrical problems right now. But these are direct current cars, not AC cars. So I don't think Tesla would be much help. But you got to admire Brad Keselowski because he thinks far outside the box. I thought he invented the Tesla automobile. Oh, oh no. <laughs> what the heck? That's, uh, Elon Musk on line two. Inspiration, maybe. Stage two in the books. Keselowski, Kenseth, Harvick, Hamlin, Larson, the top five. Newman, McMurray, Boyer, Dillon, and Logano also got stage points. And they're on pit road, Matt. A great stage two for Brad Keselowski in the two. You can see the crew member. He's going to put the wrench in the back window, make an adjustment on that two. He said they felt like they made huge gains that run, Chris Neville. And Harvick liking the direction of his adjustments today. Seeing the car turning better in the center, but late the run a little bit too loose off. No mention of the brakes on this run. Vince. Matt Kenseth says he needs help rolling the center. It's just gotten too tight, so they're going to make a chassis adjustment. The pit crew has been spot on, but a little slow that time getting around to the left side. We'll see if the number one pit box makes a difference. Now it's going to be Denny Hamlin first off. Wow, Hamlin Harvick. Man, that 11 team nailed that stop. Woo! As did the four with four tires. Harvick is the first car out with. Let me talk to Brad here for a second. Let me see if I can figure out what's going on. Hey, Brad Kazowski, it's DW here. You got me, buddy? Yes, sir. Son, you never, you never cease to amaze me. On the racetrack and off, uh, your, your hero, Nikolai Tesla. How did you come up with that? How do you know him? And how, where did that information come from? I guess I read too much, DW, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Just trying to do the best I can out here and uh, learn from everything I can learn from. And, uh, had a really good car here to uh, get that long run speed, make that crossover move, and take the lead. That was really cool and a lot of fun. And I think uh, Paul Wilson and the team's got a little short run speed now with the uh, Detroit uh, Ford, so it should be good here. Well, you're looking good there, buddy, and keep it up, and good luck in the last stage. 10-4, thanks, bud. Appreciate it. You are in front of the 20. First stage win for Brad Kozlowski. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson will start at the rear due to an uncontrolled tire on his pit stop.
Chevrolet, the official vehicle of NASCAR, is the most awarded car company three years in a row. Learn more at Chevrolet.com. Let's take a look at Jimmy Johnson's pit stop, and I want you to watch the wall, the pit wall in front of the car as they complete the stop. And right in this area, you'll see what happens as they try to roll both those tires over to the wall, and one gets away. Yeah, the catcher didn't catch it. Well, and the carrier is a little bit, you know, sloppy with it as well. Now, well, that, yeah, the, leaving that, oh. his pit. That's coming off the There's 13. Denny Hamlin oh, runs it. over. Looks like somebody on the 13 dropped their radio. Yeah, uh, by the way, our graphic showed zero, but Hamlin did get four tires on that pit stop. He put that radio on the wrong channel. Yeah, you can see that tire carrier coming around the, the front of Jimmy Johnson's car, and they just got in a little bit too much of a hurry as they dropped those tires to the wall. Made it pretty difficult to get those. Never see anybody run over a radio. No, oh, from another car. Here they go to the... Geico restart zone as the Toyota Camry XSE pace car hits pit road. Yeah, this is what I'm going to be anxious to watch here is how much Kevin Harvick is going to push Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin typically has a really good car in the long run. He usually has to take care of those tires early in a run, but he doesn't want to give up that track position. Oh, he might just uh, push him into the wall. He might not have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Harvick's got you. other ideas. I'm going to push him as much as it takes to get by him. That's right. Forget the word give. No. Use the word take. I want that spot. Sixth place. Teammates. Vince? Kyle Larson has been uh, up running toward the front most of the day, but the car has just gotten a little too tight center. Said the drive off is okay, but if he can get some more help in the middle, he feels like he's going to be a lot better. Remember, he was second here in the fall, won the Xfinity race yesterday, but still says he's not very good here. I I'm not buying it. He's in the top <laughs> five, Matt. And Vince, after final practice, Jimmy McMurray told me he was pretty confident about today. Made a good 45-lap run, liked the feedback that the car gave him. He told crew chief Matt McCall. McCall said, what an advantage with McMurray. He is so good about taking care of his tires. That's huge here. I always like watching McMurray because he's aggressive. I don't think he's a reckless driver. He's just an aggressive driver. And if he gets a chance, man, he's going to stick it in there and try to pass you. I don't care if it's your teammate or not. Third place, Keselowski coming on Matt Kenseth. Not for the lead now, but for third behind Hamlin and Harvick. He's been working that outside, and he gets right to Kenseth's bumper and then has to fall back in line. When he sent the signal to his competitors now how good his race car is, how good he is on the long run here, and they're going to try hard to keep him behind. They're going to fight Brad Keselowski every single lap from here on out. And I tell you, another guy that's really impressed me, got a good race car right now, that 14 car, Clint Boyer. He's right there in fifth place, and he is looking pretty racy. And this is a great track for Clint. He's won here before. He really likes this racetrack. He's coming off some momentum of some good runs. Joey Logano side by side with Kyle Larson, and that's going to be for seventh place. And a little further back, Here's 15th, Stenhouse, Kane, Blaney, and Elliott. I think it's amazing It's Stenhouse even racing. You know, he hit the wall early on. They went in. They did a little work on that thing, and it's better than it was before the race started. Oh, we got an 88 issue. Yeah, way up the track in turn two. Doesn't seem to be slowing him down too much down here in three and four, even though he goes way up high. I would have said he hit a slick spot, but I think the whole track slick. Oh, oh. That was inside, 19. Inside, still down there. Bumper. This looks like he's fighting a little bit of a loose condition. Tried to tried to correct, and then it almost overcorrected and shot up the racetrack. Still side by side. Casey Kane and Ryan Blaney, 16th and 17th. 
Kane is our driver profile brought to you by the AARP Foundation's Drive to End Hunger. Kane got his first cup win here in Richmond Spring of 2005 and beat his idol Tony Stewart to do it. Yes, he did. That's a great cause he's driving for there today too. That's pretty cool to see. I haven't seen a lot of Chase Elliott today as he battles Blaney for 17th Vince. You know, I was talking with crew chief Alan Gustafson this morning, and he said, you know, this just isn't one of our best tracks. He said, for some reason, we just haven't quite gotten a handle on it from a car's perspective or a driver perspective. We feel like we're getting better, but it's certainly not one of our best spots. Today, they've just struggled finding grip like a lot of people out there, but just haven't been able to move forward yet today with the handling of that car. Thanks, Vince. Left of your screen, Jamie McMurray, Clint Boyer. Chevy Ford battle there for fifth place. Pretty little tight battle right at the front right now, man. Warriors looking pretty good, but Hamlin is just, I, I swear, I thought when I saw the end of that last stage and Hamlin was being so cautious, I just felt like he knew he had a car that he didn't want to damage. Just take care of it. Kozlowski's trying it again on Matt Kenseth. Remember, this is for third place now. One second behind the leader. Mike, that's an impressive pass. Put that car on the outside of Matt Kenseth like that. He knew Matt would give him room. He wasn't worried about that, but to make it stick and make the pass, pretty impressive. Well done. Yeah, we're only 24 laps into this stage, into this run, and we've documented how good Keselowski's car is on the long run, so that tells you a little something. It's not too bad on the short run either. Stenhouse and Dillon had a little contact. I'm surprised they haven't had more of the way this race has gone on. There have been some really tight quarters. Ooh. Yeah, that's casual. It's okay. I, I can live with that. I'll have, I will you'll not, have to. I will not shake my fist at you for no, that. That's just okay. good hard racing. There's not much grip out there. You can't blame nope. somebody for making a little contact like that, especially off of turn two. Ninth place, Martin Truex Ryan Newman. Got a lot of good battles as Kevin Harvick draws a beat on Denny Hamlin. Hamlin won here last September, leading 189 laps. He's led 21 so far. Now see, I think Denny Hamlin's trying to run his own pace. He's trying to save those tires. He knows his car's really good over the long run. That's his style. He runs it really good like that. But Harvick says, no, no, you know, I, I'm not going to let you do that to me because I know you might leave me on the long run. I want to get ahead of you, make you work for this. Well, I think he looks his mirror and he sees Brett Keselowski. And I, one thing I've noticed about Keselowski's car at Martinsville, he was so strong getting into the corner. And today he's again strong getting into the corner. Really good getting down in a turn. He really closes up when he uh, when he heads off into each corner. Look Kevin, at Harvick launch off the corner. Wow. Yeah, Kevin, when he gets back to the throttle, his car really takes off. But I think I think I think Kevin looked back and he saw that two car coming. He said, I got to get going here. I better get on around the 11. And he did. But I don't think he can hold that two back. That's a bad fast oh, yeah, car. Yeah, His car is good. Entry, middle and exit. Two Fords, two Toyotas and a Chevrolet in the top five as Kevin Harvick goes to the lead.
The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Ford. We go further so you can. By Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. 164 laps to go. Harvick, Kozlowski, Hamlin, Kenseth McMurray are the top five right now. Let's look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Jeff? Well, Mike, Kevin Harvick has shown in 2017 he knows how to lead laps, but he's got to close the deal. I think today is a good chance for him to do that. He has three wins here previously at Richmond. Jeff, Brad Keselowski lost the lead on the last pit stop. All kinds of trouble on the front tires. But you know what? He has that long run speed. I think Brad Keselowski becomes the first three-time winner in 2017, DW. My guy is driving the winningest car number in the sport, the number 11. He lives a few miles away from here. This is a home game. Denny Hamlin will add to the total of the 11 car. I like Clint Boyer. I like his attitude. I like how much fun he's having behind the wheel in 2017. He was third on the short track in Bristol last week. He loves a slick track. Old dirt racer. He'll get it done in the second half of this race. Well, today's certainly been Veterans Day. No driver under the age of 33 has led a lap today. The old man, Matt Kenseth, has led 164 laps so far. I think he'll lead some more. Those are the ones to watch. Here's your latest lead change. Brad Keselowski going around Kevin Harvick to retake the lead. Brad's led 44 laps on two occasions. Harvick was out front for nine laps. Well, Mike, he, uh, he just uh, made that look way too easy, yeah, DW. Sorry. One thing I hear all the drivers complain about when the race started, loose end, loose end. That two car is not loose end. He can drive off in the corner harder and deeper than anybody I've seen so far today. And if you remember, he did that same thing at Martinsville. Remember exactly. how he could he carry in that speed in the corner, but still get the car rolling through the corner as well? That's what I'm seeing out of him today as well. Twenty four cars on the lead lap and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the twenty third of those. You see a big handful of wheel right there, Chris. Yeah, Mike, after Dale Jr. announced his retirement, he said he was going to relax. He was going to start playing loose. He wanted to have fun. But all day long, the adjustments that they've been doing that 88 car just haven't been working. And you can hear the frustration in his voice. We put tires on the thing or what? They had an uncontrolled tire. They got an uncontrolled crew chief right now. But they've got to pull his air out. Well, and and you know it's it's great to want to go through the rest of the season and have a lot of fun. And he is relaxed and having a good time, but. You have fun when you're running good, when you're winning. And so that just goes to show you how competitive Dale Earnhardt Jr. and that team is as well and how important it's going to be to perform well as well as have a little fun with closing out the, his career. Well, the crew chief says we're trying things. We've got things we can do here with 156 to go. Let's go to Larry at our Ford Performance cutaway car. Mike, fans ask me all the time, what is really happening when we hear the term wedge in or wedge out? We're going to use our Ford cutaway car, and we're going to go to the right rear. When you screw down on one of those jack boats, it's loading that spring right there. So when you screw down on the right rear, you're actually taking wedge out. Now, if we were doing that very thing on the left rear, that's putting load on the left rear, that's putting wedge in. This is an adjustment. We've seen a lot happen on pit road here today. Thanks, Larry. Eighth place. Martin Truex, Kyle Larson. A couple of drivers that all weekend have liked different lines. Larson at the top, Truex at the bottom. They're all bottom feeders now. Yeah, I just believe, Mike, that as rubbers laid down on the racetrack, that top groove and the grip that was there early in this race just seemed, seems to have gone away. It seems to come back if they go for a really long green flag run. We see Mark Trips Jr. moving up the racetrack, uh, but that bottom seems to be, or maybe maybe one groove up from the bottom seems to be the sweet spot. I was thinking about wedge, and by, back in the day, we would jack the car up in the center of the rear end housing, and somebody would shake the left side tire, left rear tire, when that tire would start to move, you'd see how much gap you had between the right rear tire and the ground, and that's how much wedge you had. Vince? 
Kyle Larson's had his time inside the top five today, but now he's slipping back outside the top ten. The car has just gone away from him, way too loose right now for Larson's liking. Looking forward to having an opportunity to get that snugged up so he can be a little bit more racy. Larson in tenth place, eight seconds back of the race leader. Right there behind Ryan Newman. It's the Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond, and this weekend it's all been about thanking the Toyota Owners, providing them with the best race experience. There's the Toyota Owners Hub in the fan zone where Toyota, Lexus, and Scion owners just had to, uh, a chance to relax and hang out with refreshments, driver appearances, grab a free giveaway. The Toyota Thrill Ride, where fans could get a ride on a closed course in Toyota production vehicles with a pro driver. And if you carried your Toyota Lexus or Scion key to the entrance gate, there's the Toyota Owners Express Lanes for quick and easy access. The caution flag is out for only the fifth time today. Debris in the uh, Geico restart zone off turn number four has put us under caution. Kurt Bush will get the free pass. Somebody threw in the towel. <laughs> 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 Buddy, <how's it> good? <laughs> oh. <laughs> bonus, <laughs> bonus points, no, no, bonus no, points funny. right there. <laughs> Pit road will be open this time. <laughs> now we got to figure out who did. <laughs> so 24 lead lap cars uh, plus Kurt Busch after uh, he gets waved around. It's called the field after Brad Keselowski <laughs> started pulling away. All right, Matt. And Mike firing off at the beginning of the run, still a hindrance for Brad Keselowski. He said, what you gained me on entry and exit, which is so much better, I've lost in the center. So they're going to adjust on that. Meanwhile, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, he says, my balance has been the best. It's been all day, Chris Neville. I just need more speed. Last adjustment for Kevin Harvick was air pressure. He said, let's keep going that direction. The car is getting better. Brad Keselowski, he's just faster than us. Vince. The 20 of Matt Kenseth led 163 laps early, but now he says the car's the loosest it's been, and he still needs some help across the center. The nose just not working through the middle of the corners. They'll fix him up, and Denny Hamlin once again, first off pit road. Yeah, that uh, express pit crew for Denny Hamlin, they're getting it done today. Unbelievable. I watched that pit stop. It was unbelievable. About 11 seconds.
Still working on my tan. It's about to turn into a burn. See you later, rock and roll here. Get a trophy. Got flat. Left front. Tire went down. We're obviously done. The hell was that? Yeah, pretty hard. Go to get you fixed up here. We'll be fine. No dash at all. All black. Reach the main power switch and turn it off and then back on. We're all good. Back to normal. Well, back to normal for Denny Hamlin means back to the lead. That's where he is after this round of pit stops. Beating Brad Kozlowski off pit road, Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, Jamie Mack, Clint Boyer, Kyle Larson, Truex, Newman, Logano, the top 10 as they approach the Geico restart zone. It'll be 144 laps to go. This is one of those, hey, watch this restarts. Green flag. Boy, Denny Hamlin took off real late coming out of that Geico restart zone. He kind of juked him. <laughs> he did. Juke Brad Keselowski. He sure did. I think they give you like one juke before they get after you, don't they? <laughs> well, in that situation, once you get to the end of the, that zone, you just go because that's where they're going to throw the green flag once you come out of the zone. So I think Brad, you know, really waited a little bit too long. All right, trouble for Keselowski, Matt. And Mike, talking about that pit stop, they were going to reverse the change they made on the previous stop. The problem, miscommunication, they added more to the adjustment they made on the previous stop. Paul Ward, Paul Brad Keselowski, make sure you make a significant adjustment on your track bar. Go up much higher to start this run. We'll take a look at the pit times, comparing Hamlin and Keselowski. Denny's wow. stop was 1.2 seconds quicker. That's what got him back in the lead. 11.1, that is an I, impressive. I'm gonna tell you, I've watched a lot of pit stops from up here. That particular stop was unbelievable. DW, yeah. I thought they took two tires when <laughs> I saw him leave the pit box. They've won the battle the last two trips to pit road. Both stops have been in an 11-second bracket, and they are hitting at least all five lug nuts. <laughs> <laughs> At least all At five. Least, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not twenty. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kyle Busch has had a long fight today. Back on lap 66, he had a speeding penalty. It has taken till now 200 laps to get back into the top 10. And he's done it quietly. Uh, you know, we haven't heard a lot on the radio. We haven't heard. Uh, a whole lot from that 18 car, but he is inching his way back near the front. And that's not typically his style as a DW. No. Usually he's making a lot of noise coming up through there. We now usually know if he's happy or not. <laughs> <laughs> on this last round of pit stops, Casey Kane was caught for too fast entering his pit and restarted this time in the back. Now Dale Jr. is also trying to come back from a speeding penalty at the same time as Kyle Busch. He's in 18th place. Okay, we're going to take this set up. We're going to shred our scratch, all right? That's what we said last spring, and we did it for the fall, and now we're going to do it again. <laughs> Can't do any worse, I mean, as far as the way the card feels, I don't think. Oh, man. With Dale and our junior, not real happy with that. That, that. This place is so frustrating. It can do that to you. You think you got it figured out. You make an adjustment during the race. You find an improvement in the car. You go, when we come back, let's start with that. They come back with that. That doesn't seem to be fixing it either. Yeah, well, when you make suggestions of things that there's driver's seat anyway, you make suggestions they do put wedge and whatever, and it makes it worse. Now you're confused, and you don't know what to tell the team to do. Well, we talked about Nikolai Tesla, ACDC, and Thomas Edison, and now in the same vein, we have to talk Jimmy Johnson. I have an alternator issue. My bolts are flashing at 12, 9, let's have to keep an eye on it. Keep us posted, please. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about the amount of load that all the fans, brake fans, and Jimmy doesn't run a lot of driver comfort. He, he's pretty physically fit, so they try to eliminate a lot of those things. But uh, if those bolts start getting down like that, you will. That's usually an alternator issue, and you'll you'll run into a battery issue as well. I like what I heard, though. He said, please, don't hear that every week. <laughs> well, he's got two wins back to back. He's a little he calmer about these situations now. And so is Chad Canals. Talk to uh, Chip Ganassi and Rob Kaufman sitting under the hauler in the shade during pre-race and uh, they both had big smiles and they should because their cars are top of the points and running third and sixth. Jamie McMurray, 120 races since he was last in victory lane but running really well as is Kyle Larson in sixth. 
It has been a great start to this year for Chip Ganassi Racing. You know, two car teams seem to be excelling right now. Uh, you know, look at Penske, you look at Ganassi, uh, you know, look over there at Ralph Fenway. There just seems to be something about a two car team. It's really working well right now. Yeah, I didn't know how that was going to work for Ralph Fenway going from a three car team. They were a five car team at one time. Now they're all the way down to a two car team, and it seems to have improved their performance and maybe just narrow down their focus. I, I heard Ricky Stenhouse Jr. talk about we take our cars to the wind tunnel every week now and come back and make improvements. We just aim to adapt a little quicker. And here at 16th, Ricky Stenhouse ooh, on the bottom of the racetrack trying to battle Ty Dillon. I'll tell you, his car has been a lot better since he hit the wall. They went in and worked on what they did to it, but it's been a lot better since it came back out on the racetrack. Larry knows. Yeah, what they had to do, we've heard a lot of drivers complain about being loose, getting in the corner, and the big thing that helps front down force and pins the nose is the front splitter. Because of hitting the wall, they had to cut the right front part of the splitter. That probably has tightened that race car up for him. When I raced with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he was always loose, and I'd say to him, why don't you just tighten that thing up? <laughs> He's like, no, no, we're just lacking so much total grip. We need all the grip we can get. It's not that. Well, maybe they need to take a little front grip out of that thing. I always, I learned so much after I wrecked the car. We take a car home, it ran really good after you've been in the wall or whatever. You take it home and start measuring things, and you say, ah, so that's why it works so good. I want them to take that one in the wind tunnel after they get home now. Well, it is a short track. Aero not real critical, but it can mess you up. Denny Hamlin's about to have company. His lead is half a second over Kevin Harvick. Harvick, McMurray, Kozlowski closing in. Can't wait to meet Virginia, yeah, yeah. Time for an eBay Motors race break. You're watching NASCAR on Fox Live from Richmond, Virginia. Denny Hamlin, your leader. Let's do a quick recap. 
stage one early in the race side by side here we had some penalty. Dale Earnhardt Jr. had a pit road speeding penalty after he moved into the top 10 dropped him back a bit then Kenseth wins stage one. Yeah and Denny Hamlin had some electrical problems with his dash. They've got charcoals there. We've got some great racing up near the front. Brad Keselowski in that two car is very fast on the long haul. He drives around. Matt Kenseth and takes the second stage. Jimmy Johnson currently 12th, but he had a pit penalty for an uncontrolled tire. Brad Keselowski, who won stage two, going for his third race of the season already, had a slower pit stop, dropped him back, currently running third. What about the long run speed as we're seeing Hamlin and Harvick battling for the lead and Keselowski running third, but Harvick and Keselowski specifically? They charge, Chris. Denny Hamlin is, is a, an expert at taking care of his tires. He usually squirts out away from the field when you talk about an extended green flag run, he's not able to escape Harvick and Kozlowski. I think these two cars, look at this battle for the lead deep into the race. I think the four and the two are going to get Hamlin and settle between those two. Yeah, Hamlin and Harvick looking for that first win of the year. So Matt Keseth dominated early, still in the hunt at fifth, but the, the track is changing. Yeah, the guys up top talked about the, the lane, the groove, the rubber that's being laid down on the bottom. And when that happens, you got a dominant car early in the race. You need adjustments to keep up with the racetrack. When you're led as many laps as Kenseth did to start this race, he led the first 100 and some laps. That means you've got a good car then. It's kind of hard to adjust on a dominant car. They needed to do that. Maybe they can rebound in the last hundred. And Kyle Busch, a four-time winner, the favorite in Las Vegas today, at least to win this race, currently running ninth as a second-place battle here with Harvick and Keselowski going on as we speak. Yeah, Keselowski's just got the car, it looks like, on the longer haul. Kyle Busch back up the ninth after that penalty on pit road, Chris. That tells you how intense the competition is. We talk about the grooves, three, even four wide at times around this racetrack, but, man, the cars are so hard to pass. He's been able to work his way back to the top ten, and that's been it. Let's head back upstairs. That is your eBay Motors race break. Mike? Thanks, Chris. 116 laps to go. It's fast and furious at the front. Hamlin, Keselowski, Harvick. Game on up front right now. But you know, I've been watching the Kevin Harvick's car. Complained a little bit about his brakes early on. He has an incredible amount of brake dust on those front tie on those front wheels. They are dirty. You can't even tell what color they are. They're so dirty. So he's using a lot of brake. And even with that miscommunication on pit road for Brad Keselowski and the adjustment that he was looking for hasn't slowed him down a bit. Oh, that car is just so good. It just he gets in the corner. I just love the way that car dives off into the corner. That's where he really gains so much time. Now, one of the things different that's happened on this run is we've seen Denny Hamlin search around the racetrack. He moved up a little bit, blocked Harvick, but now he goes back down to the bottom. I think he's going to open up the door for Keselowski. And, and again, Keselowski seems to have a car that's pretty good wherever he wants it to go. Oh, he's going to put a little <laughs> crossover move on Hamlin, gets up under him. Drag race down the back, two to the lead. Into turn three, Brad Keselowski taking the lead for the third time today. Pretty good car that two is. What, what did Brad say? He reads a lot. I'll tell you what, he, what one thing he studies, that's the competition, man. Uh, he is a heck of a race car driver. And if you, we, when we have in-car shots of him, you see him in there. He is, uh, he was one of the most focused drivers I think I've ever watched drive a race car. Eighth he place. Up on that wheel. Kyle Busch to the outside of Kyle Larson. Look at, look, look at this dude. I mean, he is elbows up, and look at that wheel. I mean, he is on that thing, man. Got that head cocked back just a little bit. Eyes straight ahead, getting it done. And he just kind of lays his head into that headrest, doesn't he? Just set, sets it in there. And, and kind of rests his right arm on that steering wheel as he turns. A lot of drivers used to do that. It's kind of a little bit old school. real close to him, too. Ooh. He runs that steering wheel really close. He can hold up two bricks all day long. <laughs> Now, last lap, Hamlin was a tenth quicker, and he's coming back to Keselowski's bumper on the outside. He, he's actually moved up a, a couple of grooves. First, he just tried to move up one lane. Now he's moved up two lanes. You know, he said that his car is really good. It's one of the best cars he's ever had, I didn't, but he didn't have speed. Well, that's unusual for Denny Hamlin to, to make those kind of comments. 
I think he might be fine in the speed right here. I'll tell you something else I think's happening too. Larry, maybe you can help us out here. It looks like it's cooling down a little bit. Uh, track temps are going down. A little bit of cloud cover. That could change every. That'd be a game changer. Well, it will, Daryl. And but I think what it also means, not only, you know, we're getting down to the tail end of this race. That's going to be a lot on the shoulders to make the right adjustments. Plus, I think the groove's going to keep moving around. Hamlin lost a little bit right there. He tried to go diamond the racetrack in one and two. The two car, Keslowski, squirted away from him. I think what we're seeing, Jeff, is that 11 car is finally searching around a little bit. He kind of had one groove he was stuck in, but now it looks like he's trying to find a better spot to run. Larry, the last pit stops in this race were at 148 laps to go. Where do we stand on fuel and tires? Well, actually, they, they pitted with, yeah, with 148 to go, lap 252. So remember, the fuel window is somewhere around 100 laps. So we could probably go to about 50 to go, but don't rule out that you might see some drivers hit pit road early to take advantage of fresh tires. One more stop for everybody minimum. I'd be begging for them. Can I come now? <laughs> Daniel Suarez did. He's on pit road right now. So is Timmy Hill with 107 to go. So I guess that fuel window would open here in about 10 laps. But it's more of a tire window. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, we listen in on Denny Hamlin's team. So he, observation. <laughs> yeah, that, that's Denny Hamlin observing the two car Brad Keselowski and what I would call the skew of well, what he's seeing. I don't know what he's seeing, but I know one thing what I see and that thing does get down in the corner. Well, you know, it gets down in the corner, rolls through the corner, gets up off the corner. They've got it figured out right now. It, you know what always amazes me, Mike and Jeff, is how drivers observe other drivers' cars. <laughs> you see oh, things yeah. in the race that you don't see any other time. Well, that's because they they think they're the best, right? If, if, if it's if I'm not up there driving by everybody, it must be the race car. <laughs> 104 laps to go in Richmond. Who will be the strongest as this one winds down? Keep it right here. Ninety nine laps to go in Richmond. Here's the Coca Cola Racing family update. Denny Hamlin in third. Joey Logano ninth. Ryan Newman, Danica Patrick, Austin Dillon all on the lead lap. Daniel Suarez uh, now three down. Under a hundred laps to go. Brad Keselowski leading Kevin Harvick by one point four seconds. 
Denny Hamlin two back Matt Kenseth two and a half and Jamie McMurray three seconds back Chris. Oh my God, pretty good day here for Kevin Harvick. He has led a lot of laps this year, but still no wins. And talking with crew chief Rodney Childers, he said, we just aren't as dominant this year. We just knew the Chevy body so well. So this switch to Ford, it's been a bit of a challenge. He said it's gonna take us a good year before we know this Ford body as well as we knew the Chevy, even though the team is spending over 20 hours a week in the wind tunnel. I might agree with that analogy, except the way he ran at Atlanta. And man, he had Atlanta won if he hadn't had that pit road speed. I, I think penalty. they can take the body off the car and he'd run good at Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, you know, they've run really, I know they might be able to tweak that thing a little bit, but not bad just changing over from one manufacturer to the other. They've done a pretty nice job with it. Kyle Busch keeps coming. Still rebounding from that lap 66 or so speeding penalty. The caution came at 66. The pit stop a few laps later. But he has just made the pass on Martin Truex for seventh. Premium Motorsports fields a Reed Sorensen's car and Derek Copes. That car not in action here today, but that team lost a special friend this week. 14 year old Sarah Bush lost her battle with leukemia. We'll remember her as we go for a NASCAR on Fox. Crank it up at Richmond.
85 laps to go, Keselowski leaving Harvick by one second, and the first of the leaders to pit. Under the green flag, Joey Logano. Now, Larry Daniel Suarez came in earlier, and we came out, when he came out with new tires, he was half a second faster than anybody. This may be setting up short pitting, coming to get those fresh tires early, but the downside, you need it all to circle through, and then hopefully a caution doesn't come. Here comes Martin Trex Jr. now. I think you're going to see a flood of them coming in now. Yeah. And Truex Jr.'s team has just sort of lost that balance they had earlier in the race. Starts out tight, starts to migrate to the loose side, but they just can't quite get that sweet spot he's been looking for to make time like the two of Keselowski. Kyle Busch is in, and so is Chase Elliott. <laughs> Mike, all it takes is one. One guy comes, and here they all come. And here comes Ryan Blaney as well, Chris. Well, Kyle Busch just haven't been able to do much with this car. Lots of different adjustments all day long, but just struggling getting off the corner. Saying if I have any arc in the wheel off the corner, the back end just slides away. Vince? 24, Chase Elliott said it had gotten better during that run, but by the end it was just spinning the tires loose. It's four tires and an air pressure adjustment for Chase Elliott. Locking up the brakes to come to pit road were Kurt, Kurt Busch and Eric Almarola. Jamie McMurray is in, and so is Trevor Bain. 43 looked like he was pretty fast getting across that line. And here comes Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin and Clint Boyer to pit road. Matt. And Hamlin's in, much like the last run. His car has just gone to the free side way too loose. Air pressure adjustment on this 11. Chris on the four. Kevin Harvick running around the top three for most of the day. He's been liking the adjustments on the car, but he said that last round of pit stops, we just went a little bit too far with the air pressure. Rodney Childers going to back that out. Chris Buescher, Austin Dillon, Brad Keselowski, Matt Kenseth on pit road, Matt. Keselowski had to drive around the 37 of Boucher. Hunter Masson and Kyle Powers of Changers doing great work. They wanted to back up the adjustment they made in the previous stop to try to fix that little hiccup. Vince. Here comes the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Matt said the middle has gotten better from that last adjustment that they made, but he's way too low on rear grip. It's going to be an air pressure adjustment with those four tires, trying to get Matt Kenseth something he can race with to maybe score that first win of the season. Almarola and Boyer are hit with commitment line violations. There is no orange cone in turn four. There's an orange square painted on the racetrack. You must have all four tires to the inside of that orange box that you see right here that denotes the commitment line. Mike, I knew the 43 was in some kind of trouble. I didn't know what kind of trouble. I didn't see the 14. He's right back here. This is him coming to the line now, trying to get it turned. Yep, too late. Add Danica Patrick to that list for commitment line violation. So does that? Does it, so you're close. not allowed to put the right sides on the box, Larry? Jeff. That's a change from last year. When you drove last year, this is a change. You have to either be all below it or all above it. Yeah, I'd be curious after this race to hear from Clint Boyer to see what. What he feels or his interpretation of that is because that is a change. Yeah, he was right on. I mean, his right sides are right on top of it, but you got to be below it. So four of our leaders or three of our leaders out on track have not pitted. Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Boy, this is going to cost Clint Boyer dearly oh, yeah. as he comes back down pit road to serve this penalty. Yeah, with about 75 laps to go here, that's just a that, that takes you out of the game. Man. Kenny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick. You're riding with Hamlin on the front bumper of his number 11. And they've moved ahead of Keselowski on this sequence of, of pit stops. Uh, Keselowski's actually behind them. You know, they came in a lap before, and that's all it takes. That amount of time to come on pit road and get back out on fresh tires. You can really gain on your competitors. That's why once one comes, they all start coming. Remember, the two car had to go around the car in, in his pit, in his way, coming in the pits. Cost him enough time that that's the distance he lost on the racetrack. Dale Jr. may be coming. That car kind of slow down the back straightaway. Nope, he's going to stay out. I'm, uh, I'm reminded he's on worn tires. That's why the car looked a bit slow. He, Newman, Johnson, and also on the lead lap, David Reagan and Cole Witt have not yet stopped. 
Remember, we saw a strategy played out like this with Todd Gordon, that 22 at Texas, where they just waited till they got to that spot where they stayed out, even though they're losing time to new, newer tires of when they might not go, uh, would they can still get on pit road and off pit road without losing a lap and maybe catch the caution. Yeah, right now, you're just holding your breath. You're holding your breath if you've already pitted that there is no caution. Let everybody cycle through. 73 laps to go. Short pitting works great, as long as you don't have a caution. Yeah. Here is uh, some audio from Clint Boyer about that penalty. Oh, Chase, That's what they said the drivers I know, can't ever have something the same. <laughs> I, 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 I'd like to, Jeff said, I bet he didn't even know that that had been changed. He said he knew, but I, yeah. I'm not so sure he did. He didn't know right but then. But he certainly was trying to get everything he could to get to pit road under right. green. What a heck of a battle down the back right here, boys. For the lead. Two, Three, four, one. and 11. Oh. Haven't had it. And now remember, this is for fourth place. Oh, is this for, that's They right, are sorry. the leaders of the cars that have already pitted in this cycle, but they are behind Newman, Johnson, and Earnhardt. And Larry, for those three drivers that are out front, uh, they've made their bed. There's no stopping now, is there? No, because they've lost so much ground. They're sitting out there on a wing and a prayer, hoping that that caution comes. Yep. Yeah, look how strong Brad Keselowski is. I know he's got one lap safe, uh, less on his tires, but man, he just drove in there with authority right to the outside going to go right around the outside of Kevin Harvick. Yeah, that car is just, it's been on the rail all day and long. Kevin's fighting hard to stay ahead of him because he knows this could be for the win. I think you're right. So sometime in the next 20 laps, if we stay green, we should see the three leaders to pit road. And that will cycle things through to Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, and Denny Hamlin. If we stay under green. Well, you just think about the guys right now that are at the front, 31, 48, 88. They have not had, they, they've not been a factor all day long. Roll the dice, take a chance, might fall in your lap. Mike, they should have to come somewhere between 45 and 50 laps to go. Hey. Oh, right. And we've seen that 31 kind of use a contrarian strategy. Phoenix, deja vu. Yeah. yeah. And he won Phoenix. There's guys down there that when they see somebody do something, they react. There's other guys down there who see something do, do somebody do something, they say, aha, opportunity. So Ryan Blaney trying to unlap himself from race leader Ryan Newman. It's been a tough week at uh, Richard Childress Racing, Newman's team, though not his team in particular. Uh, one longtime crew chief, Gil Martin, was let go. So was a team engineer. And crew chief Slugger Labby is staying home this week to prepare the Talladega car. Sammy Johns has taken his place on the pit board, uh, on the pit box for this weekend. So uh, here's a bright spot right here. And Newman can gamble. He's got a win so he can afford to take chances here. One of those three, Jimmy Johnson, is in. Matt. And Michael Chad Canals is crew chief and Earl Barbin, a spotter, reminding him about the commitment cone violation. Got to have wedge itis there in the elbow, such a significant adjustment on that 48, just so that Jimmy would not make the same mistake that Clint Boyer and others did and cost them any chance of a great finish here today. So that yeah. leaves Newman and Earnhardt out there on the racetrack on old tires. I usually see them take a half a round of wedge out. They took two rounds out of the left rear of that 48. He must have been plowing. Wow. And Dale Jr. is all but on the other side of the wall uh, down in the east end of the racetrack, turns one and two. I mean, this strategy can really play out well for you if that caution comes out. But if that caution doesn't come out, they're going to lose a ton of time to the competitors that they were racing before. Well, this race, uh, uh, Larry knows the trend. He keeps up with that stuff, but they normally don't have very many cautions. There might be one real, real late here, but what is it, Larry? Yeah, if I look at the last 10 spring races here, the average of the last caution, 29 laps to go, three times in the final 10 laps, and oh, by the way, two overtimes. But none of that will come soon enough for Newman and Earnhardt. 
they're going to have to beat a pit road within the next 20 or so laps. Intrigue. So yes. intriguing. You'll not miss a thing. We're going to keep it right here as Ryan Newman and Dale Earnhardt Jr. lead with 62 to go. Ryan Newman and Dale Earnhardt Jr. were both hoping for a caution before they pitted. They got one. Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming off four. This is way up on the outside of the racetrack, or off two rather, and there's Jimmy Johnson. Man. Bam. I mean, Jr. gets a little loose on the outside, but he still was up against the wall. Yeah, I don't I just like Jimmy didn't know he was there. Like I think Man. Jr. came out of nowhere. I don't think Jimmy was expecting it. There's Dale Jr. audio. I have no clue anybody was out there. My apologies. Or Jimmy Johnson, rather, that was. Matt? Pit stops on their way. The 11 of Danny Hamlin. He hit pit road in the fourth position. Air pressure change on the 11. Meanwhile, Brad Keselowski doesn't want any changes on the two. And Ryan Newman, Chris Neville, significant air pressure change in the right side tires. Kevin Harvick saying he's starting to lose the balance on the four car. He's a lost turn and all rear grip that last run. Vince. The 20 of Matt Kenseth like that air pressure adjustment from the last stop. They give him a little bit more of the same four times. Kozlowski wins the race off pit road. Ryan Newman right with him. Luke Lambert, Ryan Newman, that strategy paid off handsomely for them. Now, let's see Luke Lambert's reaction when that caution flag came out. These guys employed a very similar strategy at Phoenix. Well, a, a different strategy, I should say. Here's Luke. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> boy, it feels good when you gamble and win. Oh yeah. That's. I mean, that was a huge risk, but boy, did it pay off. So Jimmy Johnson pits with some right side damage as the result of that contact, and there, as Dale Jr. drove around the racetrack before that tire went down on the rim, there were a lot of sparks coming from underneath the wheel well from the right rear, right front suspension area. Well, if he was loose getting in, he, his front end's gonna look like Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s now with no splitter on the right front. I'm just still, that was one of the oddest things I've ever seen 
and we heard Jimmy Johnson say he had no idea that he was out there. That's kind of what it looked like as Dale Jr. was up so high and he got in that loose stuff a little bit. I think he had to slow and, and Jimmy just ran into him. 54 laps to go. Here's your Bush race summary. Brad Keselowski is your leader from Ryan Newman, Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick. 25 cars on the lead lap. Clint Boyer will get the free pass this time. We've had 12 lead changes among six leaders and now six caution flags for 39 laps. Here's one more look. Look, Mike. Of all the people for this but, to happen to. But look where Junior is. He's way up. He gets in the loose stuff. It slows a little bit, and the car just, I, I just know Jimmy didn't have any idea that Junior was going to be off that corner. Riding with Dale Junior. He knows he's outside from right there. Oh. Hey. He's coming there. I mean, Junior was way up hey, against hi, the wall. Get down here and say hi. I can't get you down. I cannot get you down. Keep coming, though. And I just know that's the last person Jimmy Johnson wanted to make contact with. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so the caution and the cleanup leaves Dale Jr. and Jimmy Johnson both one lap down, running 26th and 27th. Now, next week, we come off the short tracks and go to the complete opposite situation, the fastest speedway on Earth. Talladega, Alabama, for the Xfinity Series, 12.30 Eastern Time Saturday. Next Sunday, the Geico 500, 1.30 Eastern on Fox. You know what's going to be interesting, uh, Jeff, Mike, is can that 31 car possibly stay up there? He hadn't been running that bad, so uh, this just be a test. Got a chance to win another one, and when you got a win in the bank, you can afford to gamble, and that's just what they did. Yes, sir. So it'll be Newman Keslowski, Hamlin Harvick, Kenseth Kyle Busch, McMurray Logano, Larson Truex, the top ten. Pace car will drop off and head for pit road. And once again, after this sixth caution flag of the day, we'll approach the Geico restart zone. Look for Kyle Busch to get pretty. Racy back here in that third row. Green flag. Even start. I mean, side by side to the line. There he goes. Three McMurray wide, to the bottom. Wide. Kyle to the top. You just know it's coming with Kyle Busch. Logano to the top. Working on Harvick. Tell you what, when you're convinced they're all going to wreck, you just don't know where to go. <laughs> He just got hold back and hold on. And here comes another great restarter about to dive to the bottom of Kyle Busch, and that's Joey Logano. Two of those, those two guys are so aggressive on restarts. Boy, Harvick's car did not get going. So a race that Joe Gibbs Racing had to have circled on the calendar because so many of their drivers are so good here. But now here's Hamlin fighting for third with Ryan Newman. Yeah, all three of those Gibbs cars right now, the 11th, third, the 18th, fourth, and the uh, 20th, sixth. So they're all up there. And Kyle Busch is getting impatient with those guys running side by side ahead of him. Newman's putting up a great fight, though. He is, boy. But you ask most anyone in the garage, who's the hardest driver to? And they'll say Ryan Newman <laughs> before you can even say pass. <laughs> yeah. Well, while this is all going on, Mr. Keselowski in that two, he just ran his fastest lap of this race just oh. a lap or so ago. So he has checked out. Yeah, see you later. Here's Hamlin. He's waving. On Goodbye. the inside, but boy, Newman gets good drive off the corner. Newman will put up a fight now. You're not going to ride by him, I can tell you that. You're probably going to have to rough him up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Danny Hamlin thought about it right there. He could tell he went in the corner, put that bumper right to the left rear, give him a little nudge, say, hey, I think I'm a little bit better than you right now. Well, there's two guys back there that won't play around. That's the 18 and 22. Yeah, the 18 just got Let the outside 11. There. Let them get up there and see what they do. Here comes Kyle. Remember last year, Kyle Busch lost this race on the last turn of the last lap when teammate Carl Edwards gave him a bump and run. Now, Kevin Harvick restarted fourth, and he's fallen to seventh and maybe further. What's up, Chris? Boy, he's got his hands full right now, Mike. He's uh, told the team the car just way too loose. He said, I can't race it right now because I'm just turning right. 
Well, you saw Hamlin loose into the corner, <laughs> having a little trouble getting drive off as Kyle Busch passes for third. Yeah, but it's a heck of a battle right up here for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. They're all over each other. Three of those Joe Gibbs Toyotas all right together in that pack, Vince. Well, and you guys mentioned three in the oh, top trouble six. Trouble down here, turn four. There you go. Trouble in three. 88 around. And it's Junior, and we're getting a caution. Sorry, Seventh time. Sorry, guys. I just saw him spinning like crazy. He's going around like a top. He yeah, was. Yeah, I, I bet he, he cut a tire, a tire because yeah. the, the fenders are in on the tires. They tried to clear them out. Probably didn't get them all the way off of those tires and probably cut a tire. Now, Junior had cleared the five-minute uh, crash clock. As had Jimmy Johnson, who now gets the free pass. But it's Dale Jr. bringing out this caution flag. Let's see yeah. what happened. Left rear tire. He goes into three right here, and that thing just goes around and around. Watch this. Around and around she goes. Oh, that's no fun. I left for a tire, so I wouldn't do that much. <laughs> I think a lot. So pit road is open. And here come and will on. they all come? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the lead lap cars are in, Matt. <laughs> Uh -oh. And Brad, Brad Keselowski and Paul Wolf said there was no debate because they learned early on in the race what tires meant. No changes on the two. Now Brad up in turn three, Boyer and Dylan got together. They've sorted that out. Was that an accident? I just wonder if maybe the 13 made a really late call to come to Pitt Road when the 14 committed. We'll find out if we've got some... 14 had a little trouble committing the last time. Remember, that's how he got the penalty. You wanted to make sure he had all four. I love that down there that time. Kozlowski. Well, there's Hamlin, Newman, Bush, and Logano behind Kozlowski. And again, that pick crew of the 11 of Denny Hamlin comes through again. You just never know it. These races. I mean, what do we got? Uh, 40 laps to go roughly here. You just don't know who's going to be at the front of the field when the day is over with. Well, I felt bad for that guy, Kurt Busch. Remember, he, his driver cooling unit failed in the first uh, first stage laps. of this <laughs> race, right in the opening laps. So he's had a drink tube and trying to get him keep himself hydrated. Well, I'm not sure how this started up in turn number three, but Ty Dillon was 16th. Clint Boyer was 19th, and Goodness. that's how they ended up. Mm. I don't. I just that's can't imagine what could have caused that. Very suspicious looking. I don't know what happened. Oh. I've heard that a lot. I don't know what happened. A couple other big races today. The Spring Sizzler for the uh, Wheeland Modified Tour. Stafford, Connecticut. Doug Kobe on pole for Mike Smariglio. He's the defending series champ. And up at the nation site of excitement, Thunder Road, Barry, Vermont. <laughs> uh, Phil Scott strapping back into the race car after a fourth place finish last year. What's most significant about that, Phil Scott is the governor of the state of Vermont. Last year he was lieutenant governor. Back behind the wheel. Atta boy. Executive privilege. 41 laps to go. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. A lot of racing this weekend. Any car race last night from Phoenix, Formula One this morning from Russia. Some good racing this past weekend. And we got a barn burner right here. 40 laps to go. Let's go back to Larry Mack on his trends. Larry, is this likely to be the last caution or likely not? Just a reminder, last 10 spring races, the average of the last caution, 29 to go. Three times in the final 10 laps and two overtimes. Just a reminder. Keep I that, don't think so to answer your question. Keep that little sheet handy, Larry. <laughs> we may have to refer back to it. Oh, Keselowski carries Hamlin up high, and here they come off four. Hamlin got the jump. Oh, now. He led at the line, actually. Oh, now. Three wide, way on the bottom is Larson. Squeezes out his teammate, McMurray. Uh, that, and the like restart it. is under review by NASCAR. I didn't like that restart. It looked a little suspicious. Well, yesterday, Ty Dillon got called for going too soon before the restart zone. 
It looked to me like Hamlin just anticipated it really, really well. Maybe the two spun the tires a little bit, but he beats the two car by a good bit to the line. You can beat him by a little bit. I don't know if you can beat him by as much as he did, unless they can prove or, or feel confident the two car really spun the tires. And the restart is deemed legal. Good. We continue with a battle among teammates for second. Battle no more. Kyle Busch takes the spot. What a recovery by Kyle Busch. Exactly 300 laps, almost exactly, after he got gigged for speeding. Let's Here's the it. restart. Let's watch it again. There's the restart zone. Boy, I don't know. I mean, didn't he, uh, he definitely anticipated He was, he was definitely one. ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he, he timed was. it perfectly. Yeah, he did. And I don't know, maybe because the two oh, got, Matt a, got, got a, a cut tire. tire. He got a cut tire. Right rear looks like. Wow, led 164 right laps today. Oh, running in 10th place and now. Can't get to pit road. Can't get there. Vince. Boy, that's adding insult to injury. They had been running up front all day and then just had a bad pit stop, which uh, Matt teamed a uh, kick in the groin, and then they had that uh, issue with the tires. So it's gone from bad to worse for the 20 after a beautiful day early on. And remember, no interliners here. So as the air goes out of that tire, he's down. All the air is out. This is off contact. turn two. Maybe Ooh. that's why. Yeah, that's right oh, yeah. there. there oh, it go. looked like maybe Truex didn't realize that they were side by side, came up a little bit. Caution for debris. <laughs> Now he's on pit road. <laughs> but see, right there is what I'm talking about. There's no interliners here at these short tracks, only at Bristol last week. And so when that air goes out of the tire, it goes all the way down and does a lot of heavy damage to the race car. I like what Matt's doing, though, Jeff. Well, he's going to go to his pit box. He's in that number one stall down there. Boy, the trend is Larry Max friend today. You're right on it. Right on it. So we'll show you the contact between Kenseth and the 24, Chase Elliott. So watch, the 20 gets to the outside of the 78, 24 is outside the 20. Looks like a little bit of, looked like the 78 was coming up, the 20 had to come up and they just made contact. Ran out of room. And then, there's a little damage to the left front of Chase Elliott as well. He might have to come on pit road and fix that. So Matt Kenseth had been in the top five for 320 laps of this race. Hey guys, everybody pitted but I don't understand them wow. staying out because there were five laps on their tires, seven the last time, Matt. And they were debating back and forth. They said, really, I think we just need to stay out for the two. Meanwhile, the 11's in. He said they just need to be more secure on entry to turn one and turn better in the center, Chris. And Kyle Busch making the call, coming to pit lane, wants one more small adjustment. See, we're making improvements on the car. And also Kevin Harvick, he said after that last round of adjustments, we finally settled this car down too. Kyle Busch was one of, if not the best cars on track in this last green flag run, which was not very long. But both the Penske cars stay out. So Keselowski and Logano are one, two. And then the first car off pit road, which is Kyle Busch. What do you think about that, Larry? Well, like I say, the last time the caution came out, we'd run six and a half to seven laps. Everybody comes to pit road. We saw what happened there. We ran over five laps, almost six, and they stay out. I just think they're going to get their lunch aid. Well, you won't make any mistakes on pit road if you stay out. That's one good thing. Martin Truex commitment line violation. Like that. Yeah. And the 20 of Matt Kenseth goes one lap down. I feel pretty confident if that's entering pit road, that was just a real late call by Cole Pern to come to pit road or, or you'll know, put it in the hands of Mark Truex Jr. Say, you know, if they stay out, you come. And I think he just didn't get those right sides underneath that orange box that we saw happen to Clint Boyer earlier. But I guess these Penske guys, they just feel like they're they're good enough. They don't need to take the risk to come down pit road and get fresh tires. I'll add one thing to it. Because of Brad Keselowski stopping very early in the race, had he had pitted there, he would have only had one more set of Goodyear tires in his pits. Matt Kenseth entering the pits, driving through too many pit boxes. You know, we haven't had a lot of at the end. speeding penalties today. We've had just kind of all kind of little violations. Entering the pit, getting knocked below the uh, commitment line and several of those. But. Uh, 
How many speed? How many speeding penalties will you have? Four. So let's see. Martin Truex had to go out around the safety truck and then come to pit road, oh, and he drives I don't over know the about box. That. Yeah. I, I think that's that's not a violation. It's not fair. I mean, his. I had to go around the truck on the racetrack. I had at least two under the box, probably almost all four. <laughs> probably almost. I, I do think it's still a little unclear to some of these drivers if you need all four under that orange box, but I thought he did. Green flag. Right Teammates out front. Ooh. Oh, that's Ooh. not what Kyle Busch wanted to see is Kyle. Oh, three wides. Chase Kyle right behind the him. Bottom. Wow. They made it. Ooh, not yet. It's not over yet. We haven't come around yet. And we're all putting a big block on Stenhouse. My goodness, he's, these restarts are, I don't know, other than insane, they're just crazy. Now it's a question, how wide can these two Fords be out front? Whoa, oh, baby, slam that was, the door ooh, in Kyle Busch's face right there. There he goes, here oh, he goes. This is going to get wild. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I just think Brad Keselowski's got to be a little patient here because I think as we go along here, his car is so good, these tires might not matter. They're going to matter right now for several laps. You know what he's mad about right now? Not the yellow car behind him, the <laughs> yellow car in front of him. That's what he's mad about. Because Lowski had to play defense to deny Kyle Busch the bottom and pays the price. Busch to second place. But they are ganging up on that two car right here. He better do something, and he better do it fast. And even with those older tires, he's still to almost hold his own there against the 18. I think once it settles in a little bit, I think the two will be able to climb back up there, but he just needs to let these guys wear their tires down a teeny bit. Well, we're going to find out how good the 22 of Joey Logano in that clean air is out front as well. Boy, Stenhouse trying to stay outside of Matt Kenseth. He got up into Chris Buescher. They separated. Everything's okay there for at least the moment. 25 to go, guys. Hamlin gives a bump to Keslowski. Oh, he's laying the bumper to him. Oh, he is. He's it looks like Keslowski's struggling a little bit off a of turn two. That's the only play. He's good down here in three and four, but he struggles getting back to the throttle off the of turn two. Yeah, he's able to gap the 11 a little bit off four, but like you said, Jeff, he can't quite get the gas down up off two. I'm gonna give it a little higher line. Contact back in there with the 21. Ryan Blaney just got a boot from Kurt Busch. Four wide into three. My goodness. Oh, no, oh. he cut it. It cut it. Bye tire bye, down. Blaney. I think he cut his tire down. Yep. Stay up there. Stop, stop, stop. Stay up there. 41 cut our left rear. They were not. Got the wall pretty good with the right side, right rear first. I'm surprised they made it that far. Yeah, there was to... no give there, but oh there was a lot God. of take. You know, the way these front fenders are flared out. They just seem to catch the edge of those tires, especially early in a run when the pressures are down. Eighth place here. Well, sidewall is pretty vulnerable with the low air pressure. Then you just give it a little nudge. So Chase Elliott makes a little bit of contact the 41 of Kurt Busch. That sends him up into the left rear of Ryan Blaney. You can see Ryan trying his best to hold on to it. Look like bumper cars. Pits are open, Matt. And this could save the race for Brad Keselowski. He's finally going to get those fresh tires. One set of stickers left. He used that other set earlier in the race. And Denny Hamlin said, I think we need those tires. They came as well, Neville. Kyle Busch so strong on these restarts, but saying that the splitter is on the ground the first couple laps. Want an adjustment. Get that up in the air. Vince. Joey Logano came from the lead, said it's just a little bit snug in the center and a little loose off. The last set of stickers going on this 22. Remember, they start at 37th today. Six drivers did not pit. Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse, Chris Busher, Martin Truex, David Reagan, and in sixth place now, Cole Witt. Wow, this changes everything. <laughs>
see where he was. I agree. Among the things that are hard to believe today, I want to show you what Joey Logano did. He's the first car coming to pit road. He's going to stay out till the very last instant to turn in, and Kyle Busch can't see for sure where the commitment box is and goes over it. Yeah, you've got to have all four uh, tires under that orange box, that little box right there. And if you don't, that's a violation. Now, what Logano did was completely legal. Oh, was yeah, it no. intentional? I don't know. No, what Logano did was perfect. Yes. It, you know, and, and to me, there's obviously some confusion for the drivers. If they knew that all four need to be below that box, yep. and I, I heard that NASCAR told them that in the driver's meeting, but a lot of them didn't hear it, you would be way below that box. You wouldn't even be close to it. Uncontrolled tire for the 24 of Chase Elliott. He goes to the back for the restart. Here we go. It'll be 19 to go. 19 laps to go in that 42 car out. First five drivers stayed out. Here comes Logano with tires way down on the inside. He's got grip. Not so sure we're done seeing caution yet, guys. Oh, no, you're this not. Gonna be no, wild. It gets ugly these last few laps. He's inside Busher and Truex for third place. How about how this race has come to Joey Logano? I mean, it is in his hands right now. Fresh tires. Now he's got the track position coming to him. Yeah, all that three wide stuff, you can get away with that early on in the race, middle of the race, because you'll give and take. But once you get down to this point, you got to just take, no give. And Logano got the lead when his teammate Kozlowski had to defend against an inside move by Kyle Busch. This is a knot right here, boys. This is a big old knot. Logano with a buck to Larson. <laughs> you certainly know I'm a little faster than you are, and I am coming by. I'm here. <laughs> I don't think there's a whole lot Larson can do to can defend do. that. Nope. So Joey Logano, who started this race last due to a transmission change, after yesterday's practice, they found a little metal in the filter, and they had to start from the back. 300th career start for Logano. It'll be 15 laps to go, and he is out front pulling away. Well, I'd like to tell you he's got it made, but I don't think he's got it made yet. Ned Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, Casey Kane, Kyle Busch, and Denny Hamlin all won their 300th career start in the Cup Series. Vince? You know, I talked with Todd Gordon, the crew chief for Joey Logano earlier this morning, and he said, I know we got to go to the back, but I'm still mad we didn't win the poll. I felt like we had the best car, and I made a mistake in qualifying. But we are confident we have the car that can make it from the back to the front today. Well, it took them over 300 laps to do it, but they have done it. Now can they finish it? Now here comes Hamlin around the battle. outside. What a battle up here for of second Kyle place. Larson and look and Keselowski's right there. Yeah, we're going to have a great battle for second between the 11 of Denny Hamlin and the two of Keselowski. But they're uh, the 22 of Logano is checked out if we don't get a caution. And I'll count know. out Ricky Stenhouse, who's right there with that front five in the I've 17. Seen, I've seen a lot of tire smoke from banging into people. I mean, I've never seen guys run over each other the way they are right now. 12 to go. Logano is saying, please, please don't. No, no caution. <laughs> How you like the track's new slogan? Chaos at every corner. <laughs> well, they just have it. Every, right now, it's a, it's a fact. <laughs> There's more chaos than we can talk about. They it's everywhere. They didn't make it up. I can tell you that. Mike, as much as I questioned the strategy by Todd Gordon by staying out on that caution back at lap 366, it paid dividends, but what led it to paying dividends was the caution where he led everyone down pit road, and he had that track position prior to that caution. So it ended up being a great call. Second place. Yeah, this house is working real hard to get by the 11 of Denny Hamlin, but it's going to be too little too late, even if he does. The 22 is just set sail. Yeah, Ten very much, laps to go. Very much looking like a Penske 1-2. I don't know how they've kept from wrecking. I don't know how somebody's kept from cutting down a tire. I'm telling you, they are leaning into each other like I've never seen before. We've seen some barely touch and cut tires. And then on that last restart, there was smoke everywhere rolling off of tires. And how about a shout-out for Frankie Kerr, the crew chief for Cole Witt, left him out there. He was in sixth place when we restarted. He's going to get a lead lap finish out of this. Yep. 
I've been really impressed with Cole Witt on the short tracks in that race car this year. Right He's gotten way more out of it. We talk about all the time, bring it home in one piece, right? Finish it on the lead lap. Cole Witt's doing that. Kyle Busch restarted tail end. He's gotten up to 24th, but boy, it's tough slog through all of the traffic he has to contend with. Kyle Larson trying to hang on to seventh against Truex, Newman, and Kurt Busch. Hey, is, is that's four cars under a blanket right there. There's 28 cars on the lead lap. And none of them will move. This still now it's five under a blanket. Add Almirola. Oh, oh this is four battle. wide. Oh, Here we go. Big Slides battle. Back the race track is the wow. Oh yeah, four wide. There's no way you can make that. There's no. There's Kurt Busch created all that. He got underneath the 78 of Truex. Made the made Truex slide up the racetrack. That's what made them get four wide right there. And they made it. Woo. There's hardly any way you could have made that. Six to go. Oh, this isn't over. It's still two by three and four more wanting to join them. I can't I just can think about all the struggles that Kurt Busch has had today. <laughs> How he's pulling off this top ten right now is amazing. He's in the top ten. Daniel Suarez at one point was three laps down. He's back on the lead lap in 13th, closing up on that big knot of cars as well. Got yeah, Suarez. Wow, that's incredible for Suarez. What a lesson he's learned today. He struggled at times, but they kept working on it. He stayed in it. That's why you got to battle. You got to battle with yourself, the racetrack, your competitors. That's what you learn, though, Jeff. You never give up. Five with to a go. free pass and a wave around and everything. You got a shot to get back in every race. Fourth place on your right, side by side. Stenhouse, Harvick, McMurray. Four, six, four to go. Three cars battling it out for fourth. You talk about a battle, Stenhouse. Look what he's been through today. He backs into the wall, going into turns three and four. Now here he is battling for a top five. Yeah, he started fourth, had a lot of trouble early on, but recovered and running very, very well here with a few laps to go. They've been making a lot of progress, haven't they, D.W.? Oh, slowly. Yeah, they've been getting there. Uh -huh. Fastest car on the racetrack, Brad Keselowski, 23.50. Most everybody else is right around 24 seconds, but Keselowski is more than a second behind with three to go. Oh, okay, man. I think if Brad Keselowski doesn't win this race, he's the one that's going to be the most disappointed. And there's going to be a lot of them disappointed from all the issues that have happened and violations. Well, he's, Keselowski, think of the dominance he's had today. He's going to get there. If, if he had 10 laps more, he could probably could get by the 22. But he's only got a couple laps to go. Boy, Harvick had a run, but Stenhouse holds him back. And McMurray is right there to challenge. Yeah, Here I, comes Logano off turn four. The white flag waves. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Still, Harvick, Stenhouse, side by side. McMurray right with them. Joey Logano, eight car lengths ahead of Keslowski, who stuffs it into turn three. Cuts it down to five car lengths, but off turn four. Joey Logano has his 18th Monster Energy Series victory, beating teammate Brad Keselowski by three quarters of a second. Hey, yeah. Nice see, job, guys. Great see job. Joey show off a little bit as he's sideways across the line. Do? What are you going to do? We give you an opportunity, you make it happen. Oh, yeah. Away from his teammate, Brad Kozlowski, and Logano, whose last win was Phoenix last November, nine starts ago. There's somebody not real happy with the way things ended up. And that would be most everybody? <laughs> most everybody, not named but especially Joey Logano. Kyle Busch. No, we were watching there Kyle Busch. Go. He looked like he was in a hurry to catch up with somebody, but uh, I think he just in a hurry to get out of the car. Yeah, he wants to talk to somebody, all right, but I don't think it's anybody driving the race car. <laughs> Joey Logano, the seventh driver to win in 2017, started in the back due to a transmission change. And Joey taking the checkered flag as today's Sunoco fueling victory. So you can question whether Joey Logano was the best car today, but you cannot yeah, question his ability, yeah. his ability to do burnouts. <laughs> He's very impressive with those donuts, burnouts. A lot of fun to watch. Denny Hamlin finishes third, two and a half back. Ricky Stenhouse holds off Kevin Harvick for fourth. McMurray sixth. Newman, Kurt Busch, Almirola, and Truex. Your top ten in the Battle of Richmond.
It's the furthest back a driver started at Richmond and wound up winning from 37th in a transmission problem to start the race to victory lane with the driver of the 22, Joey Logano, his first victory of the year. And here is the move with 23 laps to go. The caution, he cuts just inside that commitment square, that orange, and any part of that that you touch, Kyle Busch did, caught for the violation. It certainly took him out of the chance to win. He was asked about it moments ago by our Chris Neville. Kyle, any chance we can talk to you about that uh, pit violation there? Balls and strikes. With Michael Walter, Chris Myers referencing a judgment call by NASCAR. Clearly, we saw the tires on that orange area. Yeah, and you can't have any part of your right side tires hit that orange square. He couldn't see clearly when he went to go to pit road because Joey Logano waited so late to turn in, but he did make a violation. So the winner, Joey Logano. Let's head to victory lane. It is a celebration indeed for Joey Logano and this 22 team at Team Penske in his 300th Cup Series start. He goes from worst to first and then to victory lane. You told me before the race, well, you got to be patient in this one. And then at the end, you had to go. What makes this one so special? <laughs> Oh man, just uh, coming from the back for one, being a 300 start uh, to bring this shell pencil forward into victory lane. Uh, man, that feels really good. I'm having my guts out there. That's all I had. We won with a car that uh, may have not been in the, the winning car, so that's something to be very proud of uh, as a team. That means execution was there and we were able to put ourselves in position to. Uh, man, I'm out of breath. <laughs> uh, race there at hard at the end. Brad was the fastest car. He was so fast, and we had a good restart to be able to get enough cushion. But he was catching me a couple of times a lap there at the end. I was running so hard, but uh, obviously can't do this without Roush Yates. AAA, Auto Trader, Wheels Up, Coca Cola, SKF, AutoZone. Um, and everybody that helps out this Team Penske organization. A nice one two finish. That feels good. I think there's four fours in the top five. That's something to be proud of as well. So good, good. It's nice uh, to finally break through and get a win. Congratulations. Well deserved. Joey Logano wins at Richmond. Matt? dominating car for the two team and Brad Keselowski but did the finish actually come down to the second to last stop and how you stayed out maybe that might have jumbled up track position a little bit yeah I don't know uh, I felt like we'd have been fine just you know that last restart there there's about six or seven cars that stayed out and uh, we got behind one that was really slow and uh, didn't really go so we lost two or three spots by the time we could get going and by then Joey was gone I think really what we needed is about 10 more laps I wish this was a Richmond 410 or 4, I'd take a 500, but uh, it was uh, a really good effort. We had a ton of long run speed, just uh, those short runs at the end, uh, we weren't good enough to, to pass cars on a short run. We were good enough to kind of hold serve and then go on the long runs and just kept getting all those yellows at the end, Matt, and couldn't uh, make anything of it with the Detroit Genuine Parts Ford. But uh, happy for my teammate, for Team Penske to get a 1-2. Certainly wanted to win, but uh, a lot better than what we were in practice and, and really pleased with the speed and uh, the effort today. Uh, uh, didn't quite get all the breaks we needed to fall our way, so uh, that's how it goes sometimes. And it was a weekend sweep for the captain, Roger Penske, won over an Indy car and then here today in NASCAR. Ford has won four of the first nine races this year. A couple of Chevy teammates collided with 56 laps to go. Junior wound up 30th, Jimmy Johnson 11th. We're going to hear from Dale Earnhardt Jr. when we continue live from Richmond, Virginia.
Congratulations to the Coca-Cola Racing family driver, Joey Logano, for his rallying victory here in Richmond, Virginia at Richmond International Raceway. And after nine races, we check the standings. You win, you're in. Kyle Larson, it continues to be the points leader. Logano with his first victory of the year. His teammate has won twice. Jimmy Johnson has won twice. At this time last year, Michael Waltrip, Joe Gibbs Racing had won five of the first nine races. They have zero wins so far. Great performance by the cars today and last week in Bristol, but no result. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Hendrick Motorsports. Let's check in with Chris Neville, who caught up with the driver of the 88. Well, Dale's first race after announcing retirement this week, and Dale, it kind of sounded like an up and down day, but the second half of the race, it seemed like you were making improvements on the car. Saw you talking to Jimmy Johnson there. What happened? He said he didn't see us. <laughs> um, he had pitted and got tires when he was out there running around the top and weren't ready to pit yet. And uh, he said, you know, didn't get any notice that he had a car outside. So he was coming to pass me. I was running to the top right against the fence and really wasn't watching the mirror, so I didn't even know he was there or anybody was coming. TJ was giving me a pretty good warning about guys getting on my inside and uh but otherwise when you're running the top you don't have to worry about it they kind of take care you know everybody kind of takes care of you but jimmy didn't know he's there came off the corner and didn't know the car was there so uh it was an explosion um but the car held up pretty well it, it knocked a sway bar arm off of it so we run the, fin the last bit of the race without a sway bar hooked up but wasn't a great day we did uh make a lot of adjustments and that last run i was pretty happy and uh, obviously we were trying a pretty wild strategy staying out and um, I was pretty comfortable it was going to work because our lap times were pretty decent and everybody else was coming to us that had pitted so it wasn't going to be too bad. Um, just terrible luck. I don't know what to do, you know, but we we're probably going to finish anywhere around from 10th to 15th today. Not all that awesome, but uh, you know, we just had such terrible luck. And Talladega is next. Thanks, Dale. Yeah. Now that's the good news. That's a track where Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won more than any other track. Talladega next Sunday, you'll see it on Fox. Boy, a Ford dominating the top ten in this in this race, along with the uh, victory. What, six Fords finishing in the top ten? Yeah, including uh, Eric Amarola. Great run for Richard Petty's team. That car's been solid all year long. We've seen steadily improved performance from the 43. He's creeping up toward the top five. Kurt Busch was eighth. Kevin Harvick was fifth. And fourth was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Had kind of a wild day. Matt Yoakum is standing by with him. Impressive day for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 17. Back-to-back to back top 10s, you, you know, must almost wish that almost every race was a, a short track because you guys have really turned up the program. Yeah, I feel real good about our fifth, third, fourth all weekend. Um, obviously, I made a huge mistake there uh, running the top early in that first stage and, and cost us stage points in both stages and just really had to fight back all day. But um, these guys never gave up. We worked hard. Fifth, third, forward, man, the team was uh, fabulous. We, uh, we did the best we could to get it fixed. Weren't good on the short run, so uh, I thought our best lap was about five or six. So I was like, hey, let's stay out here at the end. Uh, I think we'll be uh, better off. So uh, only two lead lap or two tires, uh, two guys that has tires uh, beat us there. So I was real happy about that. The fifth, third, forward finishes fourth. As we do head to Talladega, we've had our seventh different winner in these first nine races. Uh, Brad Kozlowski has really owned that place. He has yeah. four wins in his last 15 trips there. He's owned it lately, but it's Dale Jr.'s house. And after calling for retirement and looking forward to the rest of the schedule, he had to circle Talladega as a place where he could get that win and get into our playoffs. And think about Ricky Stenhouse Jr. This kid is getting it done. He wrecked his Ford and still finished in the top five. Look for him to be strong next week in Alabama as well. We thought that this would be the place for Joe Gibbs racing to get things going, whether it was Denny Hamlin, and we saw some moments from him. Matt Kenseth, who dominated, wound up 23rd in the first portion, won the won the first stage, and of course, Kyle Busch and his frustration. How concerned are you about Joe Gibbs racing going forward? Not at all, especially after the performance today. Those cars were fast. They led a lot of laps. They contended for the victory. Circumstances didn't get them to victory lane, but they've got speed. I think they're going to be, be fine. Obviously, Denny's won at Talladega before. It'll be fun to see how those Toyotas team up and run together at Talladega, we see that every year. And uh, Ford, a dominant performance, at least at the end. Uh, he didn't lead his first lap until 30 to go. And then Joey Logano winds up in victory lane just ahead of Brad Kozlowski. Tonight on Fox, Bob's Burgers, The Simpsons, Family Guy, and The Last Man on Earth. And for more from victory lane on victory lane, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on FS1. Joey Logano will spend some time with uh, Michael and I, and we'll have Larry McReynolds uh, kind of review some of the ups and downs of the race today.
Friday and next Sunday, 1.30 Eastern from Talladega, NASCAR on Fox. So stage one winner, Matt Kenseth. Stage two winner, Brad Keselowski. In the end, Joey Logano in a Ford in victory lane on a sunny day in Richmond. For our entire crew, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.